The other day, I had the fantastic opportunity to sit down with Matthew Griffin, or Leth, as he's also known as. Leth is the person that handles marketing, PR, and publishing for Team Cherry and Mongoose Rodeo. And over the course of a few hours, we chatted about all things Hollow Knight, Crowsworn, and, yes, Silksong. I don't know if I would call it news, but he was able to give us a lot of interesting insights on the Silksong delay, among some other things as well, which was really exciting, so thank you, Leth. <laughs> I'm gonna let the interview speak for itself, but I've made some timestamps so that you can go to the sections that you find interesting. On that note, uh, enjoy the interview, uh, subscribe if you want to, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. I guess your career before Hollow Knight. Um, but oh I guess... yeah, this this is about the time I... Just before I helped Eric put Stardew Valley out into, you know, the, the world, um, I talked with Ari on the phone. What was this, around 2015? It was 2016, January 2016. Mm -hmm. Just before Stardew Valley launched. So they, they knew you from uh, from that, or how did they... Well, I, I, I reached out to them because they had a trailer, they had the Ferocious Foes trailer go out and uh -huh. get a lot of eyes on it. And I think they were looking into publishing, or at least the response, you know, got publisher interest for them. And so I reached out to them on behalf of the publisher I was working for and said, hey, if you guys are looking for a publisher, you know, consider us and you'll be working with me. And uh, I'm about to launch this game, Stardew Valley. And then after that, you know, we can talk. Um, and Stardew Valley took off. Uh, but I reached out again and Team Cherry, or is, it was, uh, I think, I think first I talked with Ari just Ari, and then the next time around was ever, ever, you know, Ari and William. But they were kind of like, yeah, we're thinking we want to stay self, we want to stay independent if possible, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe not go with the publisher. And so then I offered to just join the team as <laughs> just sort of an agent to, that, you know, could join the team and handle those duties. And uh, yeah, they, they thought it was a good idea too. So they joined, joined forces and like the summer of 2016. Yeah, I'd say they made a pretty good judgment, I think. Wow, thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I agree. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of advantages to, to hiring some, like you get, like I said, they get to stay independent. They don't have to put a publisher name on top of their title. Uh huh. Yeah. And then they have a guy who's really active and just with the team, like a, a team member who just will handle all the things, all those like uh, orbiting tasks or that are floating around game development. And they, they're over here like, man, I just want to work on the art. Or I just want to code or add content. But we've got this thing we got to take care of. Let's say submitting builds for or testing or localization or whatnot. Mm -hmm. and it's so like, you handled oh, all I'll of handle the, that like non-development side of things, right? Or a lot of it. Yeah, if it's not right. I, it's all development, but it's kind of like what we would kind of, you know, when people think about development, they think about the creative side of the program, yeah. art, music, sound effects. So yeah, it's everything else is kind of, you know, handling meetings, reading contracts, uh, bringing new third party, you know, business opportunities to the team or whatnot. Um, if let's say they want to port the game to mobile, I mean, it's not Team Cherry, but let's just say <laughs> theoretically a company I'm working with is like, well, we want a mobile game. Then I'll, I got to go find them a team mm -hmm. to do it, negotiate with them, you know. So in Hollow Knight sense, place. like, let's say the Switch port, that was like you right. getting in contact with them. Or uh, say Fangamer, for example. To... Uh, yeah. If you're collaborating with them with new merch and stuff like that. Well, when a game's kind of taken off, you have the luxury of having a lot of sort of businesses come to you. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of sort of mm -hmm. feeling them out and give, having a call and seeing which you think is the right fit and yeah. uh, making that call. Uh, yeah. So it's a little bit easier. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. So I guess now that kind of brings into the, the, the Hollow Knight proper, you know, as a topic. Uh, so now, now people know All a little right. bit of of like what you do or what you did with Hollow Knight. I guess you kind of still do, you know, there's a lot of things that with like Hollow Knight as its own game, 
uh, mm-hmm. even like with, like aside from whatever Team Cherry is working on now, uh, like there's a lot of that stuff that needs maintaining that you still have a hand in, right? Oh yeah, and I've I uh, yeah a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I'm kind of like surprised uh, that there aren't more folks kind of taking the direction that I've that I have uh, with sort of becoming like a publishing agent I like I try mm-hmm. to call it you know, like someone who will join a team instead of being a publishing company that bring you know you've got publishers out there um, and it probably is more important now than it was during the green light years to have a publisher again mm-hmm. or at least someone that can handle that kind of thing for you or has the contacts etc but I'm just surprised that there aren't more uh, folks coming out of say like a publishing company like hey handle publishing a couple titles for a company and then just after they've learned all those skills and made those contacts just move away mm-hmm. from that and go sort of go rogue <laughs> go like and yeah, do what i'm doing yeah and for con- when you say just... the green light days you mean like the yeah. steam green light system correct yeah right yeah so steam had a steam had sort of a a way for indies to get onto Steam, which was like getting, it was kind of like a mixture of Kickstarter mm-hmm. um, and just being on Steam or getting getting votes for people kind of pledging that they would buy the game or. Yeah, so you it. couldn't just put your game on Steam, is what, what no. he's saying basically. There was like you a, can now. a process. You, yeah, now you can, right. but like back then. Uh, but see, I felt like the green light sort of situation encouraged indie developers to sort of get into the publishing side and marketing uh-huh. side like it kind of forced you to go out and get votes and from people mm-hmm. and show people your game and that's a very important step in finding success as an indie uh an indie team and now since you can i think you just uh pay a fee and you get on developers can skip that step again and that it makes it so it's kind of like well now you need someone to help with mm-hmm. since you're not doing the sort of word of mouth advertising or marketing anymore you need someone to help with that again and now there's a lot of games on there so you need it <laughs> so yeah you also need it for you got to stand out you need someone to help you stand out so that's again why i'm just so surprised there aren't more folks kind of moving out of like let's say some big wig at uh microsoft in the marketing department then just leaves microsoft and goes i'm gonna be a independent uh, publishing guy you know but maybe it's risky, too risky for them. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that gives you a bit of security, like in terms of yeah, you get the having security stable with employment the and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in I guess we'll we'll go back a little bit now to to Hollow Knight during because you you joined okay. in 2016, right? During the the yeah. the final phase because Hollow Knight for those that don't know released in well most of you probably know but Hollow Knight released in <laughs> February of 2017, right? So during that last year. Uh, you join the team, and uh... yeah, just what six to eight months prior, I guess. Yeah, about mm-hmm. eight months prior to. to yeah. Then. So Hollow Knight's release, I guess, and that that final bit of process was it like, was it especially stressful? Like how how was the, uh, how how did it feel to like or in general, I suppose. Not nec- I mean, I'm curious mm. about Hollow Knight, but. Uh, like how how did it feel to release the game? How does how does it feel to like put all that hard work into into the world and just like hope that it resonates with people? <laughs> well, it's a loaded question, I know, but I think just generally launching a game is going to be a tense, exciting. I mean, it's all, all everything, all those feelings. You know, it's like having mm-hmm. a baby. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like there's tons of work and effort and responsibility all wrapped into this one event and just, yeah it's it's exciting it's tense um the funny thing is is and there's an interview with ari and i from tokyo game show in like 2018 mm-hmm. was that 20 or 2017 because it was just before grim troop uh was launched but it was kind of like they're like, well, were you up all night or what were you doing at launch? And Aris is like, I was sleeping <laughs> <laughs> because we launched at, uh, I'm assuming the afternoon time in where I was at, you know, Pacific mm-hmm. standard time. 
So it would have been like uh, between 12 and 2 or something Pacific Standard Time. And for them, there was probably like 3 in the morning. So they were just asleep. So I I had the responsibility of hitting the go live button, Ooh. you know, and launching the game. But in hindsight, it's like, wow, I, I clicked the button for a huge title. But at the time, it, you know, it wasn't a huge title yet. It wasn't a... It was just a lot was, of years of work. It's still like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't have that context either. You know, mm -hmm. I'd launched a couple games before, so it wasn't like this was new. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, we just, um, I did a, some live streaming before the launch of the game and giving out copies of the game, I think. But, of course, didn't send those copies out until the game was out mm -hmm. and sent the keys out to everybody but that's just how i normally handle games is hand is like then key you know get key requests from all the streamers that want a key then verify they actually have a ch a, you know, a real channel because you get requests <laughs> from you get requests from people from a youtube channel that has like zero subscribers and stuff too like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like someone's trying to get a free game <laughs> so it's like okay i'm not sending one there mm -hmm. uh but sending all those out and then just um, going and watching people play, introducing yourself in the chat. You know, I worked on the game. I did this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, good question. You play. I, good question in oh, chat. Yeah? Um, you don't live in Australia, do you? Like, how? No. How is it? Is it an additional? And I guess relevant to to Crossworn and Mongoose Radio as well. Um, mm -hmm. You don't live in. They are in Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is it difficult to like organize like the work if you're trying to communicate? Like, is that like is that something that you have you have to like create a system to efficiently communicate or like no, has that well, ever been it, a challenge? Is what I'm wondering. Yeah. It it was for when I was working with the Pathway team there. They were in Germany, and that mm -hmm. was a, that was tricky because just that the way the hours lined up. With me I, at the time, I was in California. It was just difficult to have us, you know. I'd I'd be up till like uh, really late, you know, midnight or something, in order to talk to them in the early morning or something like that. Mm -hmm. So then it was just kind of like, oh, this day I'm free in the morning. Are you free in the late evening? And I'm like, yeah. So I just I've kind of moved my whole life schedule to <laughs> be up in the e late evening, you know, past midnight. And Team Cherry, uh, their morning is like my late evening, you know, after dinner hours. Uh, and Mongoose Rodeo is just an hour ahead of me. So I talk to them almost all day. Oh, yeah. I guess deal. for for them, time zone okay. isn't really a problem. It's yeah. more like distance uh, in case. As far as, like, as far as me being in the U.S. and the teams I work with being international, I think it, it has been an advantage in a lot of ways. Like when dealing with other businesses that are largely based in the United States, um, with a few exceptions, mm -hmm. like it's easier for me to hop on a quick call or get something delivered or signed or whatever uh, during my day versus having to wait for someone in Europe or Australia to wake up and deal with the thing when everyone else is already off work, you know? Cause, yeah, because I work all day. I, you know, I'm available all day every day uh, to handle things. But most people with who we work with, they don't want to be working after five, you know, <laughs> p.m. Yeah. their local time. So um, it's it's definitely solved a lot of issues with logistics. And if mm -hmm. it's uh, makes it sense, just, you know, it's helped there. Um, and I can also travel. You know, before COVID, I was flying a lot to local things in the u.s like the paxes and twitch cons mm -hmm. and stuff so having someone in the u.s that it's like more affordable for them to just quickly fly over to this event and talk and represent the team is all was also super useful yeah i think about sure. getting back Makes into sense. that pretty soon too i guess uh it's one of those things where I get for for the um, the the workload that you have in terms of with with hollow knight uh a lot of it like did you always because you're far like far away and the time zone difference 
uh, I guess there, there there are ways to fix that without having to do like meetings where one of you has has to be in the middle of the night. Like you, there are other ways mm -hmm. to communicate. Like you can just send messages yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. We live in the new era with the Discord yeah. and you know all these instant messaging. We you know we started out on Skype and we eventually <laughs> moved off of Skype. <laughs> I remember Skype. I'm not that. Yeah, young. Skype is still a thing. Yeah, apparently. apparently. <laughs> like some uh, some of these uh, some of these companies that are really old, you know, big companies. They got they got folks still using Skype. I I finally got rid of it. I think earlier this year. It's like I'm not talking to anybody else on Skype. Everyone's moved <laughs> on to other stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't need it anymore. Yeah, and I guess after Hollow Knight's release, like how how was the how was that? How was the 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 original? reception i suppose how was your experience oh so with that? the reception was really good um but we launched uh like about 10 days or something before the switch <laughs> launched and zelda <laughs> yeah came out um and uh yeah that was uh that was something i was hoping to avoid what was the first what was the zelda game breath of the wild right breath of the wild yeah um so a big part of my marketing strategy is streamers and so of course I want to avoid a game that I think is going to eat up a week of streamers time or more you know yeah <laughs> for sure so I did not want to launch at I mean I guess it was a uh, 14 days prior to Breath of the Wild maybe it, mm -hmm. around that um, but fortunately people came back to Hollow Knight after they got their Breath of the Wild fix and the game picked up, had a nice long tail in terms of sales. And um, then because of that, because of how well it was selling leading into summer, we had an opportunity to be featured in the summer sale on, mm -hmm. on Steam. So we took that and I think that was pretty much the catalyst for everyone jumping in and just finding out about the game and talking about it. It was a huge boost for the game. And now here we are, <laughs> six years later. Yeah. Oh my here God. we are. Yeah. Just, uh, set, wait, six years. Yeah, six years. Yeah. Six and a half almost. Because it was February, yeah. right? Yeah, about six and a half years. So, my, so Hollow Knight, before, um, before Hollow Knight, I hadn't really dealt with localizing mm -hmm. like getting the game games translated so that was my first sort of foray into that realm and localization that whole industry is just there's there's potholes everywhere yeah like you can really step in it <laughs> so that was a big challenge um mm -hmm. and we eventually went gravitated towards fans who wanted to get into who felt like fans of the game who reached out to us who wanted to get into sort of lo the localizing industry and wanting to work on the game and we we went sort of i mean it's almost indie <laughs> the way mm -hmm. we approached it but we went that route more so than just like going with we started trying to go with the company and then had some mixed results and so it was like oh my god this is gonna be a headache let's just go with people who like are fans of the game their hearts in the right place they understand the source material and they're going to do a probably a better job up front with maybe some minor mistakes or take a little bit longer yeah you know, but it's one of those things that you team. need to have a lot of like faith in right because you can't really you yeah. can't really uh like can't verify verify right. if you don't know the other language <laughs> yeah so we before that summer sale i was working hard to get like four or five more languages in i think and we pulled it off like the day before the summer mm -hmm. sale began we like launched a bunch of new languages um german and spanish and i think korean maybe um and then yeah then you just kind of look at the forums and see what people's responses are to the quality of the translation and we i mean it was it was pretty painless as a speedrunner uh the chinese mm -hmm. translation is great because <laughs> it lets us say oh a yeah bunch of time. yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good job with really that. Really interesting. <laughs> Thank you. So that's <laughs> yeah, I, I learned about that with 
watching speedrunners that you guys mm -hmm. switch to Chinese because it's the characters less characters and you can get through the dialogue quicker. Yeah, that's really funny. Also, Didn't I guess now that. that I've brought up that topic, that's one of the big questions that I guess a, a wider topic that I I wanted to kind of ask about in regards to Hollow Knight, like. Uh, I guess in general, first of all, how how active are you guys at Team Cherry behind the scenes in regards with keeping up with the community or stuff like that? And has that changed a lot over time? Uh, mm. Yeah, I would say uh, we're... Well, I think I'm probably the most active. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm the most active in terms of uh, keeping up with what folks are saying. Yeah. Something that, it's something I want to know. You know, to kind of gauge what the fan sentiment is at any given time. Uh, and then, you know, do we you know, do we do anything about it or, or not? You know, so it's kind of a question. Yeah, but, makes sense. Um, but, like, a lot uh, of the time, for a lot of years, like, the, the blog posts and stuff, like, you guys have featured fan art and stuff like that, which is really awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Well, I'm, like I, I know none of you have like an active like or that big of an active presence because you prefer it to do it in like a more private way, which is entirely valid, right? But like, do, do you yeah. guys still like roam around and like <laughs> see what's going? Well, on? I know I do. I can't. I can only speak for myself. I like I, I check in with the communities probably daily. Kind of just take a peek. Yeah, almost daily. Uh, unless, just I, unless I have like a lot of work going on, like with the Crow Sworn update we had last week, you know, it was out of mm -hmm. out of the country and stuff. But um, yeah, you just kind of take a peek and look around, see what people are saying. And um, but when it comes to community management, I've I always encourage the teams I work with to be pretty hands off on all that. Uh, it's a lot of work as I'm sure you're aware, just even running a Twitch channel is a lot of work. Yeah. And I can't even imagine trying to manage a Discord the size of the Hollow Knight Discord. It's, it's uh, you know, and Discord reaches out to us and they'll be like, wait, you guys don't own this Discord? Because, you know, <laughs> you, you, there's like, and we're like, no. You know? <laughs> They're like, do you have an official Hollow Knight Discord? And it's like, I mean that's the one where everyone's at like that's we're not going to go make an official mm -hmm. one that we have to moderate and set the rules for and check in on people and get rid of spam or whatever that's this whole other world developers yeah. i just tell them don't you don't even want to go in there <laughs> like, and you guys are a really out. small team too i feel like that's yeah, absolutely. always important to to bring up in terms of uh, Team Cherry related <laughs> things, whatever they may be, you know, there is a bit of a hornet shaped elephant in the room uh, But <laughs> you know, you have to remember the, the there's like five of you total <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's let me think here. Yeah, there's like... there's you there's Jack, Ari, and William and Chris, Chris, right? Yeah, and then there's the testers like Greg for example, right? Well, there'll be I mean, we'll we'll have. Uh, I mean, everybody tests. You know, like in indie games, everyone kind of does everything. A lot of everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I just expect the someone from that team um, to also go and like manage a Discord or a forum. Let's say, like if we're going old school, you know, like especially a forum if the on Discord the has. Or... 300,000 members or something. You know? Is it at 300,000? I don't know. I don't <laughs> check Hollow Knight main for my sanity. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of oh, I'm kind of yeah. running the same approach as you guys are. 218,000. That's a lot of people. 218,000. It's incredible. Yeah. So it's a big responsibility and I guess we just figured and you know, this I think this bears out to be true that the fans will handle those communities themselves and if people don't want to be a part of it they'll go to the one they do want to be a part of and it'll just work itself out you know yeah like natural selection <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, so, it makes sense the ones that sense. are uh bad will die out and the ones that are good that people like will 
will flourish, you know. The, just, uh, the evolutionary forces force applying upon yeah, the Hollow Knight exactly. community discords. <laughs> For all you science lovers out there, yeah. um, you learn about natural selection in the school. I don't know if they teach that anymore. Maybe it's changed now. But... Of course they do. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, it's been a while since I've been in high school, okay? Yeah. But... <laughs> I, I can like, speak you know. as a current experiencer of, I guess, the Swedish equivalent. Okay. Uh... <laughs> but All yeah, right. I guess on a, on a on a note that I'm very excited to to hear about, uh, speedruns. I love speedruns. I'm oh, a speedrunner. Yeah. Do you guys watch speedruns? I watch them sometimes. I again, I can't speak for the whole team. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're pretty. I think they're cool to watch, but it also, and just, I don't know. I'm not, I don't have that level of skill. So it's kind of <laughs> like, it's like when you first start watching me, you're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah. Uh, but the way you guys sort of just keep doing the same thing over and over again to shave a couple seconds, I, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't watch into that degree. <laughs> yeah, like a, it makes sense. It's fun to come see, you know, hang out and talk with folks. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you're also, but with speed running, I've I don't want to distract you either. <laughs> like popping <laughs> in the chat, being like, "Hey, what's up?" And then have you, if you like, were to mess up a move or something because I said something, I'd feel pretty terrible. So no, I'll that would be your occasionally. fault. That that's what we call that, a skill oh, yeah. issue. You oh gotta, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be able that's to. A skill issue. Yeah, if if I throw because you entered chat, then it's my fault. You know. Oh, throw. Yeah. Like, yeah, throw a run, like throw away the, okay, the pace. You know, you're learning a lot of lingo today. I have a few, a few we... more language lessons lined up for later. Um, and actually, I guess um, a funny thing to mention is that was the original yes. idea for this stream when I when I reached out to you. Oh uh, yeah, a few yeah, months yeah. ago, the original idea was Back that I would <laughs> Im interview Leth while teaching him. How to speedrun Hollow Knight. So we, we we might have to shelve that yep. for a future time because oh it, it's God. a little much, you know, to do at the I same time. I chickened out. I was like, I don't want to try and. Are you kidding? <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blue uh, reached out, wanting to do an interview with the, teaching me how to speedrun simultaneously. Yeah. Which I probably wouldn't even be able to talk. Yeah. So <laughs> on... Yeah, I figured it was a bit <laughs> Hold on, much. I'm trying to. One thing at a time, you know. So I just kind of, I was kind of like, um, you know, I don't go out of my way to do interviews. So let me just, let's wait till I feel like we got stuff to talk, you know, something relevant to talk mm -hmm. about and pushed it back until the Crossworn update. Yeah. So that, uh, yeah. So I, I felt like, you know, I don't want to talk about myself the whole time. Let's uh, have something new to discuss that just happened and. So yeah, I reached back out to Blue last week. I think I was in Canada already. And I was like, hey, you know, you down to finally do this interview yeah. next week when I get home? We've been talking about this for a few months now. Oh yeah. We we thought yeah. about doing it right Since around March, the uh the uh the quote unquote silk song delay, but then we decided right. to do it now. Uh because it just worked better, I suppose. Um but I guess the well, thing I'll I was get, if you remember why you can ask me you know why why not do the interview at that point later on when we, when we talk yeah about the, i guess it's about yeah it's uh yeah for sure I'll, I'll i'll keep that one i'll hold on for that one for a few more minutes also we said we were gonna try to aim for an hour and a half this is gonna probably go longer than an hour and a half i'm just checking if that's good with you oh it's oh yeah yeah i'm fine okay good uh, hour and a half to two hours would be you know yeah Good, uh, good good time that means we were kind of just chill and uh you know had some banter <laughs> exactly um but i guess something i was curious about uh because you know on a from a uh, like regarding speedrunning from a speedrunner's perspective you know i kind of know what it's like but you you are a developer like you you've worked on coding mm -hmm. and creating games for hollow knight that's not like exactly kind of your main thing right um but from a developer expect, uh, perspective, like, is it is it flattering or is it frustrating to see people like absolutely pick apart your game? Like, did you know you can beat Hollow Knight in five minutes uh, if you abuse <laughs> all glitches? Less uh, than five minutes. 
I, I probably, oh, I don't know. I haven't been put in that. I did a smidge of coding for mm -hmm. Hollow Knight, I think. If I recall, I did a little bit of coding for the language selection screen at the start of the game. Like letting you pick, you know, English, Spanish, yeah. or whatever. I think I coded that. <laughs> like uh, just a little minor thing. I hadn't even opened Unity before. They're like, can you code that? I was like, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but um, I would assume... I don't know. If I was making a Metroidvania, I definitely would have speedrunners in mind. Like, I would be thinking, if I place this little flying guy here, they'll see it as a pogo opportunity to skip this or that, you know? Like, yeah. You know? It's something I would be conscious of and encourage. For sure. So, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to see. Like, uh, as long as they're not totally doing something that breaks... Yeah, it doesn't. It's not a big deal if there's a huge mm -hmm. break in the game, um, <clears throat> unless it's like something that, <laughs> unless it's like something that happens for everybody, and then it's like, oh yeah. wow, okay, like right. everybody's having this problem. And like the the thing is, that, but... and I, I think Team Cherry, like, seem to share that that philosophy for the most part. Uh, like for one, you guys yeah. added the speedrun patch to the Steam beta, which was really nice. Like that was yeah, that was such a big like a uh, gesture for support of the speedrunning community and we all really appreciate that because it, it makes it so much more accessible for those that don't know if you want to do speedruns on patch 1.2.2.1 which is the one we do for example any percent true ending and all skills in for the optimal times the old process you had to do some like steam down patching you had to like patch steam itself and there was like a really complicated and very unintuitive and it's not actually mm. shady, but kind of shady process. It, it <laughs> yeah. feels a bit shady. You're not like you're not uh, doing anything. Like you're not pirating the game. It's nothing like that. You, like it's through Steam, but it's it was a very unintuitive process. And around mid when was it? Mid 2021, uh, Team Cherry added that bat, uh, that patch as a beta that you can opt into in the Steam uh, options. Yeah, I think Fireborn hit me up see this is another advantage of i mean this is this is exactly why you want to kind of be at least active to a degree you mm -hmm. know with the the fans is if they have an outlet to kind of reach out to someone like me who has access to the team you know i'm like hey uh like fireborn i'm pretty sure it's fireborn it might have been a different streamer fireborn if he's if he's here he could confirm or not if he wants but it would be like, it's a. Can we get this one? What was it one two two one? Yeah, one two two one. As a, as a uh, branch, you know, and because Steam has the ability, to, you can drop down and pick a branch. And he's like, that would be really great for speedrunners. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a fantastic idea. And it, you know, if we still have that up that build, you know, I'll just tell uh, Jack and see if he can upload a speedrun branch. And he did it. Yeah. Not too long. I mean, just a couple days later. Um, to me, that's really like uh, that's that's sort of real interaction with the uh, you want you want to say community or public relations or, mm -hmm. or, or gestures like that, not uh, you know, and like the riddles. Yeah, for sure. We like did from like the that... side of uh, of the community. It's it's really nice as well to like feel like like obviously you you can't just like <laughs> we don't want to waste your time when because it's like oh yeah but if, if there's something that is important could be done quickly interesting well yeah of course you, so. then we, we don't feel like it's good that we don't that we have that opportunity to reach out and just like talk about it and then maybe something mm -hmm. can be done and i think even in regards to like actual uh, actually like in the game team cherry have included like for speed running now we're talking about a different topic by the way but uh, like, there are a lot of skips that we kind of have theorized that are uh, intended. Uh, and obviously, it's really hard to know without, you know, Ari or William or, or Jack or uh, anyone yeah. confirming. But there's there are some, like, there's, there's this uh, statue below the Watcher's Spire that is very conveniently placed that you can get up there without using wings. Because um, you can pogo it or yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that probably was... I don't know. 
I don't know if that was delivered or not, but I'd probably lean towards it was. If, um, yeah. if I feel like most people convenient. agree that one is very, it feels very deliberate. Uh, yeah. And even in the cases where like Team Cherry patches things that, that you know, we use in our speedruns, like one of the big ones that I poked fun at you the other day for was the, the inventory drop, right? <laughs> Um, oh they yeah, did patch you that, the menu. even though it's like not it, it like it's not we can always down patch right so it, it's not the biggest deal when stuff that only affects us is patched uh, but even in that case like there are uses of the inventory drop that really break the game like for example you can oh. you can get soft locked out of vengeful spirit for example if you inventory drop into the pickup and walk out of the room it's a little little oh, okay. awkward uh, I highly recommend you take a look at some glitch speedruns later. They're pretty crazy, okay. uh, and they're they're pretty hard to understand, but they're very they're very interesting. And um, I don't know, like what the main thing I want to kind of my the point I'm trying to make is that um, when we break things, we do it out of passion for the game, right? It's never like a <laughs> oh I'm gonna right, go yeah, yeah. desecrate this developer's work, right? <laughs> nah, no, I don't think anyone assumes. Yeah. That it's um, for that kind of re you know breaking a game or finding a break <laughs> somewhere mm. like if it helps your run like it helps yeah. your run but i will say i tend to watch the non yeah the non break i don't know what they're called no major like glitches like, is the rule no major glitches i would I, yeah. I definitely prefer to watch something that i could theoretically do and mm -hmm. not have to yeah that makes to, sense to i've never even run a glitched that. one like, uh personally mm. either but I, I, okay. I think um, in general, in terms of speedrunning, or at least in, in the Hollow Knight uh, community, I feel like they, they don't get enough attention because they're, they're as impressive. They're just a bit harder to get into. And I think that's part of why they don't get that. Uh, the, uh, the same, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, the same exposure, I suppose. Because they're a bit harder to understand. Like, if you if you watch someone break the game and beat it in less than five minutes, it's like, whoa, I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit harder true. to uh, to grasp, I suppose. They're a little bit less uh, inviting to beginners in that regard. Uh, uh, we still have uh, almost 1,500 people watching. That's crazy. <laughs> Hi everyone, that's a lot of people. Hope you're all having a good day. Um, how's how's the weather over there? <laughs> over in wherever you are. <laughs> oh god, they're, they're gonna all start saying. Yeah. I don't really Hi everyone. Hi. Yeah. Okay, everyone's saying hi. That's good. That's good. see the best part, Leth. Uh, I'll let you mess around with this if you want. The best part about having a big yeah. Twitch chat is uh, when you tell the chat to do an emote and they all do it. It's oh. very satisfying. So, uh, chat, what's 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 an emote? What do you want to do? Like? That happened to me. Um, that hap that happened to me. I don't know how infamous this is, uh, but it was kind of a left moment back in December. What was this twenty twenty? <laughs> um, was it twenty twenty? Where I. I told everyone to go into the Nintendo Direct and say Ascend with Gorb. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Ascend with Gorb chat. Everyone spam Ascend, ascend with, with Gorb. Gorb. Hell yeah. I, uh, I was like, let's go Ascend with Gorb. And <laughs> I thought it was just going to be fun, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it went pretty nuts. And I'm sure Nintendo was like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, like in, yeah. the, in the Nintendo Direct, the Indie Direct in December. Um, and it had the unfortunate side effect of a lot of people thinking there was some kind of announcement happening. Oh yeah, for sure. Everyone's... The <laughs> There's always, like, the second... that That's something... I'll, I'll cover this a bit later, actually. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna hold on well, to Well, yeah, thought. but let me it's... just... I, uh, the payoff, the, like, the, the happy ending to the story was um, that I knew... I kind of knew... It was like a calculated move to a degree because I knew that we had the edge magazine coming uh -huh. that same month so i figured at worst people if they assume that there's news coming and then there's no news that they were they did get mad with <laughs> they did get mad with me but um i knew that there was something coming at the end mm -hmm. of that month you know they would uh, forgive you 
I was. I hope they did. You know, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't get emails saying I forgive you, Leth. <laughs> I forgive don't, you. That Leth. doesn't mean go email you. Don't email me that. As I don't mean me uh, forgiveness. But, I can say it on behalf um, of everyone. All right. Thanks, I forgive please. you for uh, <laughs> making people say. Uh, I just thought you. it would be fun. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that was probably the last time I was kind of like, okay, everyone's kind of on. Pins and yeah. needles here. So your shit posts I, I are too powerful, it. and you kind of learn right. your lesson. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, another yeah. thing that I was curious about regarding Hollow Knight um, is the voices, right? You voiced a few characters in Hollow Knight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, Nailsmith, you voiced. Uh, you voiced mm -hmm. Markoth, Lem are a few. I don't Everyone's actually favorite. remember a few, uh, if there's any more. I did the, the noise for Cloth Sleeping. Oh. Here, let me see if I can... It's like this. <laughs> so, I... That's my Predator impression. You I know, can hear the old movie that. Predator. <laughs> I don't think it went through. Uh, the, oh, it uh, didn't come through because no. I'm noise-gated or something? Uh, but uh, feel free to do, like, a Lem or, Mar or Markoth impression if you want, if you remember the line. Okay. Wow, I can't believe that noise Nail doesn't Smith. doesn't go through. It's like that clicking, uh, snoring sound that she does mm -hmm. when you before you see her. That's just I do that with my throat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nothing came through. Oh, that's a bummer. It must be my uh, on Discord. Hang on a second, I could probably fix that. Let's see here. It's uh voice and video, and then all right, let's try this again. Did that work? Still can't hear anything. Damn it. All right. Oh, shit. Wait, All right. I need to keep this in full screen. <laughs> All right, that's Damn. okay. Can you do uh, Nailsmith? So Lem, Nailsmith would be like, Ah, <laughs> uh, Aranja Stenja. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Mm. Look at this voice actor over here. In the stew. <laughs> Karatel Akari. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive that you can just do it on command. <laughs> I can't believe no one's made you done the, do this before. I think I did it once in an interview before, maybe. <laughs> uh, and then, and then <laughs> he did the thing. Chat, don't simp. <laughs> <laughs> someone uh, in chat someone just says they said, heard "Do a yeah. night impression." I think they're telling either uh, you or me or both of us to shut up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Um, and then Lem is kind of just my normal voice. I think I pitched it up slightly because my. But what's two like the process? So... How did how did you decide decide what gibberish to say? Like like uh, what does Lem say? He says, "Tell me, Ardred." You know, that's just like yeah. me talking. Yeah, you know? but how how did you how did you decide like the gibberish? Like how what is that process? That's something I've always been curious about. Oh yeah, I kind of went off script a little bit. We had some words. Wait, off script? Use. What did the script look like? <laughs> well, no, there wasn't a there wasn't a script, but we had we had kind of like a collection of words uh -huh. that like Zot said and stuff. And I just I was kind of like, I'm just gonna go to this uh, Dungeons and Dragons name generator <laughs> website, <laughs> and I looked up. I think I looked up human or human names or elvish names or something and started reading reading names <laughs> that it was generating. <laughs> well, there you go. There, there, there's something new we haven't heard before. That's really interesting, actually, because that, like uh, I, I've, that's, yeah. I've always been curious about that. Denja was probably some warrior name or something, you know? Yeah, like yeah. how? Because the 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 strange thing about Hollow Knight and the the voice acting is that. Um, Everything is like they're all they all say their little different thing, but it still feels mm -hmm. really well connected. And I, I think that's impressive. Like how everything is like random as you described it. <laughs> yeah. And it's still like In my in my uh my head canon, it's like there's different dialects depending on the part of the world mm -hmm. you're in or something, you know. To, to explain away my my uh just going and saying random names. <laughs> uh but they're just kind of, I think they're just like, okay, that sounds good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, there's no, uh, there's no grand, like, <laughs> plan for it. Lem eat, just... lem eat 10 egg. It's like when people ask me to say, lem eat 10 egg. Yeah. That's like a big meme. That's some kind of meme. Yeah. Yeah. What else does lem say? 
He says... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm blanking on it now. Uh... Helma... Oh, Helma Delka. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just me talking. Like, yeah. <laughs> the the Markoth and Nailsmith, I kind of, like, did, like, a really deep voice. And Markoth was, like, a angry battle monk or something, you know? Like, he was, like, uh... Was that the same approach? I mean, he just... Markoth, I just wanted him to sound cool because I, I thought the character looked cool. Yeah. You, know? you, you succeeded. <laughs> it does Thank sound you. pretty cool. Um... Borasan Kien. Oh, look at that. That That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Velmi Ardred. Velmi Ardred. So, the, the, uh, the voice for the Nailsmith, I thought I was recording for Lem. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to do this kind of like calm, librarian, soothing voice. And they ended up being like, no, 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 we'll, we'll use that for the Nailsmith. Uh, we want this uh, Lem character to be kind of annoyed with you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sighs, like, yeah. oh, Paul. Yeah, oh, there you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of, like, mm -hmm. exasperation, you know, like, yeah. oh, my God, this little guy is interrupting me again. Like, I okay, I'll look tell at you my about relics. This artifact. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um... Lore question: yeah. Does Lem eat ten egg? We need to know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That was a hilarious video, though. Yeah, that, that's a good video. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think great. it's, it's going to be fun to see because I've seen you. Do, you've done some character voicing. You guys posted on um, Mongoose Radio's Twitter, I think, that you did some voicing. Oh there. yeah. And I'm, I'm not yeah, gonna. I'm I... not gonna ask you to confirm or deny whether you're voicing any characters in Silk Song. Uh, but okay. I don't know. I'm I'm excited for the future of recognizing, being like, "Whoa, was that left?" Because that's always fun, you know. I I'd be happy to do a voice, but I don't really I don't really consider myself a voice actor. I think that um, Hollow Knight it's easier to get away with sort of uh, amateur acting because you're speaking of just a made up language. Mm -hmm. So you, so I feel like um, it, with Crow Sworn when I did kind of like the "Hey there, lad" uh, video mm -hmm. for the, I was just sending him like this is what it could be like, you know, you're just yeah. So it's more know, like a placeholder, like I guess. Yeah, it was. It was. I think. Yeah, they were wondering how. I think we were talking about what could voice acting be like in the game, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, they could just have a greeting that they say to you, like, you know, you know it's, it's just like, what do you want, you know. And it doesn't necessarily have to match up with what they're saying. That what they're saying, it just kind of establishes their character and how they sound. Yeah, you know, that's probably what we'll end up doing. That's a nice instead approach. of doing like a full a full voiceover. Seems like a huge undertaking. I can't. I, I don't understand how companies do that. <laughs> you gotta give CC to... Mackay something to do. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> with vocalized, um, you know, Chris Warren means... vocalized, Silk Song vocalized. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's the, it means you have to have the script like a hundred percent worked out far in advance, and I just don't know if indie teams work that way. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Know? Like the one exception is like things. that I can think of is Hades, and that must have been like such a big endeavor, right? Mm. The amount of uh, voice acting and oh, that game is so good. Right. And I just yeah, it's incredible when it's done. Yeah. And it definitely stands out. Uh, but I just don't... I've never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be a pretty big undertaking for sure. Uh, so you want to... Do you guys want to know a little bit about Mongoose Rodeo? Or is, yeah, is I was going to uh, move over to that. I actually only had one more question. And I wasn't oh, okay. planning on asking this uh, regarding Hollow Knight, at least. Oh, or for now. Oh, here we uh, go. But a lot of people have been asking it in chat. And I figured I would I would ask as well. Uh and since I mentioned already Hellenist vocalized and I guess Pale Court as well, the two big fan-made mods that have come out. Oh have yeah. You, how much have you seen of those? Like, what what are your thoughts? I I haven't seen much of those mods. Um, they're they're I just I uh, haven't got around to watching them. 
Yeah, you or... should. They're very, very cool. Uh, I very nearly, like, I almost did Lem's voice uh, for the vocalized, but just mm -hmm. ended up kind of backing out of it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, apologizing to CC, but, <laughs> like, that's something I wanted to do, but uh, I just ended up getting really busy with other things and couldn't, couldn't make the time. That makes sense. You're a busy but, guy. Yeah, after obviously... all. You're working on so many things, like at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you got you got real life stuff too. Everybody yeah, does. Yeah. You know, exactly. But, but always uh, things come up. Breaking news: but... Team Cherry are real people. <laughs> They're re <laughs> with real lives, and they deserve yeah. to have a break as well. Okay. Yeah, I said yeah, it. It's officially declared. Uh, you can all have a break. <laughs> Go get right, some rest. You. Don't work yourselves to death. That's bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to do something really cool here that you probably weren't expecting, except I accidentally already spoiled it to chat. I think I saw. accidentally moving the... Boom! Mm. Background change! Oh, the knight's still there. Boom! Background change! Uh <laughs> We're talking Crowsworn! Let's go! Hell yeah! Whoa, I spent you snap way that too much time. The preparing trailer this. what's Sorry? that from oh yeah the screenshots the... from the trailer oh, i was nice. trying to get some like in-game ones but i opened the trailer i was like is there any good background Just, from this yeah background. and then that looks nice cinematic hits me in the face and i'm like wait this is perfect this looks so good <laughs> it almost looks like it was framed to you know yeah for this uh discord setup because you got the sort of different colors on the top and bottom and yeah it looks great. I'm excited for Crossworn. And on that note, yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about Crossworn and Mongoose Rodeo and everything you've got All going right. on over there. Uh, well, so I can uh, I can kind of lead lead the charge here. Um, go ahead. I in uh, what was this? 2020, late 2020. Man, this was uh, around the time of the Edge magazine and the out of context <laughs> bugaboo that won't go away. Of me saying, oh, the game's basically... You could say the game's basically mm -hmm. finished, but blah, 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 blah. That's out of context. People thought I was talking about Silk Song when I wasn't. Um, I, I tend to still keep an eye out for new games to work on. Mm -hmm. And one of those ways I'll do that is is checking uh, the Screenshot Saturday hashtag. And I might be misremembering this, but I'm pretty sure I found Crowsworn through that hashtag. It basically popped up on my Twitter feed somehow, whether it was through that or not. Um, and immediately I was like, "Oh, this looks this looks awesome!" Yeah. Like, uh, I followed them uh, in December of 2020, hoping they would see and you know follow me back so we can chat. But they didn't. <laughs> it was heartbroken. Uh, and then um, about what was it? April, March. I think it was late March of 2021. They put out their their coming to Kickstarter trailer, and there was a little bit of controversy going on about it. Like Mossbag even replied to it, mm -hmm. like this isn't a copy of Hollow Knight kind of thing was going on. That's actually <clears throat> we might. I should take oh. that question now. Actually, now that you mention it, which question? Um, okay. Because that that sort of thing with comparisons, and I was curious to hear your perspective on it. Um, in regards to Crowsworn, like a lot of people uh, do, like in general when talking about games, we use comparisons a lot as a, a descriptor, which can be useful. But in in the in the terms of Crowsworn, like for us content creators and stuff like that, like a lot of us make Hollow Knight uh, comparisons, obviously, because a lot of us are Hollow Knight fans who are also really excited about Crowsworn. Um, mm -hmm. But do do you feel like the comparison stuff outside of that original controversy? Do you feel like it gets taken too far? Do you feel like it diminishes from the original vision that you're trying to create that everyone just keeps referring back to another thing? Oh, well, I think that that's just natural. Um, we're not gonna go around telling people how they should talk about Crowsworn. <laughs> you know, that's just uh, that'd yeah. be ridiculous. So you guys are free to talk about the game however you want. We kind of... So I found out about the game... Well, I found out about the game 
prior to that controversy or mm -hmm. someone's you know so-called controversy but a lot of people found out about it because of that so you know when you look at it objectively it's certain at least from a marketing perspective you know which is something i look at um it was it was great for the game and so we certainly aren't going to go around and tell people stop comparing <laughs> us to hollow knight yeah um, makes sense the only thing the that a developer has to do if they don't want that comparison to be made is work to delineate the game from mm -hmm. from the inspiration as much as possible and i think the team's making strides to do so uh, but it's also one of those things where it's like but we want hollow knight players to to want to play crow sworn you know yeah, like it's, for sure it's it's like the same genre mm -hmm. a lot of the feel is the same you know you got pogoing and exploration and whatever so theoretically someone who likes hollow knight will like crow sworn i'll vouch so, for this actually i played the beta the other week. oh yeah it's oh, yeah, really yeah. good i'm super excited for it it looks great well there Plays you go great. <laughs> there you go there the... i saw that you had the highest viewed crow sworn playthrough video on on twitch whoa <laughs> yeah it had like a bunch of views on it and colette i think was number two Colette's oh, awesome. Glad to, glad I think I saw them in chat, the actually. Uh, just uh, yeah, Colette's there. I, or at least earlier. Oh, there. Hi, Colette. <laughs> but uh, we're, you know, we're not going to shy away from that. But the the only way that would result in like a... I'm not talking about Crow Sworn here, but if you're just theoretically a, working on a game and people are drawing comparisons and then the game doesn't, you know separate itself doesn't satisfy yeah it or it doesn't even well even you could you could take that approach but i feel like if the game is just a lot like hollow knight but has some differences and it's a new mm -hmm. world and new and you know new, new enemies bosses and whatever people will be happy with that but if it's like a a game that doesn't quite cut it let's say um then people will be like oh you kind of bamboozled me into buying this game yeah it makes sense most one's not gonna have that problem so we're not worried about that yeah, I mean, you know. on top of that, I feel like the the original like <laughs> response of and... calling it a ripoff. Uh, oh, that um... is is it's like not. Oh, chat. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> yeah. we're not gonna comment on that. Uh, but okay. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty funny though. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we're not talking about anything in particular here. To be clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but I feel like, at the end of the day, iteration and inspiration is such an important part of the creative process. Like, from from a gamer's perspective, as you said, if I love Hollow Knight, which I do, and I see a game that is inspired by Hollow Knight, but like does its own thing and takes that inspiration mm -hmm. and makes makes its own game, such as Crow Sworn, it's like I I look at that and I'm like, oh wow. I love Hollow Knight. This is going to be cool. I'm excited for this. Uh, yeah. And I think yep, yep. in fandom culture, there tends to be a small subset of people that kind of end up... I don't know. They they get really defensive about their things. And it results in stuff like yeah, they got their team. And yeah, yeah. They're on, they got like their that. team and they're, they're rooting yeah. for their team. Exactly. That's okay. I mean, that's just, but it's, it's that's not a competition just... is what I'm saying. Um, which I'm sure you agree with. Like... For the for context, mm. even Team Cherry backed uh, Mongoose Rodeo's Kickstarter for Crossworn. I'm yeah, pretty sure that's that's true. Yep, they, uh, they they got the, I think they got the access to the demo too. Probably play the demo. Look at that. I it's mean, all... they yeah they commented on it. Yeah, they backed mm -hmm. it and commented on it. There's um, when I first joined the team, I mentioned Crossworn. I was thinking about joining Mongoose Rodeo in the same capacity, and they were like. Oh yeah, the game looks awesome. We uh, when's the Kickstarter? <laughs> you know, it was mm -hmm. like okay, that yeah. answers that question. You know. Yeah. So basically, what well, the point the we're trying to make here is that oh boy, you don't need to go on your defense. Uh, well, don't harass anyone in general, but you know, there's no need to like <laughs> defend Team Cherry's <laughs> honor against the pesky Crowsworn. You know. <laughs> I suppose. Oh yeah. I don't, I mean, I get to see both sides. I don't really see, I, I, maybe I'm not clued into 
enough parts of the internet or something, but I haven't really seen much uh, anything mean really being. Yeah. You know, it was a bit at the start, right? But it, it cooled down. Yeah, I think uh, right when. But then I joined the team. <laughs> And it, and it was kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> he's playing both like the, sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, he's not going to go do that unless mm -hmm. the teams are cool. Yeah. Know? So it was that that probably uh, was a big, I don't know. I kind of just, that maybe wanted to join the team more. Yeah. I like, I like a little bit of controversy. It's <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah. And, uh. It, it was funny because you, you, you and Mongoose Rodeo, before you announced that you joined the team, you guys were having like some, some uh, banter back and forth and they were like, yo, Leth, look at our, look at us. And you were like, ooh, you know, everyone mm -hmm. got a bit of a teaser. And then a few days later you announced that, oh, I'm on board. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think, I think, some, I think I got tagged in a tweet from Mossbag or something or a mm -hmm. reply to him. And and people are like, what do you think? You know, I was like, oh, I think it needs a little bit more buzz sauce, you know, or something <laughs> like. Then it would be a rip off, you know, a true rip off, you know, or something. Yeah. But just, um, but I said that before I even start chatting with Mongoose Rodeo, and mm -hmm. they they when they followed me back, I was I was pretty excited to um, just chat with them, and I figured they were gonna get some publisher eyes um, around that time, and it sounds like. You know, they were, and I was like, well, you know, let's chat before you go make a decision like that and see if maybe you guys would like a, th think we're a better fit for what you want. You know, we'll see. I mean, there are in indie teams that want publishers too. Yeah. You know, they like, that's what they want. So I talked to them and they're like, oh, no, we, we want a publisher. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I don't think we're the right fit then. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I work better with people who want to be more independent and kind of loose with how things are handled. Uh, so, you know, you, that's another thing you learn to, that's another thing you learn in the sort of game development scene. It's kind of like what kind of folks you can get like a feel for people. And, and, you know, I might like a game a lot, but if I get, I get the feel that maybe we're not, you know, not going to mix well. And it's like, well, I just, you know, don't think it's the right fit guys. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, something like that. That's only happened like once or twice, though. Yeah, that makes that, that makes a lot of sense as an approach, like in general. Um, and then, right, yeah. A, about two years ago, exactly. Though, uh, I guess the the most important thing was Crossworn's Kickstarter. You guys launched it. Yeah, about about two years ago, right? And yeah, it's been, we just had the anniversary of the mm -hmm. end of the Kickstarter last week. Yeah, so eight days ago. Two years and about a month and yeah it's been two years that's it's been a while <laughs> i know i Time can't believe flies. it's been two years already yeah and uh well i think to say that the kickstarter for crossworn was a success is probably the biggest understatement i could make because yes. it was a very very big success and I'm, I'm wondering uh in general has that i don't hear it i don't hear you anymore did my internet drop Ooh. Boop, can you hear me? Hello? Hold on. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> can you wait? Is stream still live? Is it me or is it Leth? The stream is wait, can you live hear me? and I can hear you on the stream like with a delay, huh. but I don't hear you through Discord. That's really strange. Uh now? Hello? 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 Oh boy. Try... Try... No, I don't hear you. Try leaving and rejoining the call. But I can hear you on the stream. Alright, cool. We're communicating with a few seconds of delay, but that's nice. See if you can... So you might have to mute, uh... No. Discord. No, we need, we need to... Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna try... Hello? I still don't hear you. Wait, if you can hear me on stream, Maybe I need let's... to drop out. Hang on. Yeah, oh. He just has a lot of delay. <laughs> Hold on. on. Let's try Bear it. with us. Bear with us. Hello? Hello? 
Hello? Where do I do the Lego Yoda death scream? Hold on. Hold on. Here? Soundboard. <laughs> oh no. It's your connection? Alright, alright. We can wait a bit, we can wait a bit. We can hang out. We can hang out, chat. How are, how are you liking the interview so far, chat? Uh... How, how are you enjoying your time today? There's a lot of new faces in chat today. A lot of a lot of people have been finding their ways here from the all the different corners of indie games and the Hollow Knight community. Uh, welcome. I guess I should introduce myself. We introduced Leth. If you don't know me, uh, I'm Blue. I'm a Hollow Knight speedrunner and uh, general content creator. I make uh, videos on YouTube about the game. Uh, I'm mainly a 112% all Pantheon bosses runner, uh, but I don't know. I'm a big Hollow Knight fan, so this is a pr that this is something that is happening. Hey, Hello. I hear you. Yes, we're so back. Let's go. Well, another I... another uh, slang lesson, by the way. Uh, what? Something as Zoomers say now is that when something is going badly, we say it's so over, or we say okay. it's it's Jover, which is. A uh, portmanteau of uh, Joe Biden and over, because there's a picture of Joe Biden where he looks sad that people post, and they say it's Jover. Uh, okay. And when th when things are looking good again, we say we're so back. Uh, we're so, so back. we're so back. We're okay. so back right now. Oh my now. gosh. Yeah, you kids. <laughs> Lingo. It's yeah. Jover. For context, um, when uh, when they did the Crossworn Kickstarter anniversary stream. The, oh the no! Mo Mogus Radio, gonna... uh, they were <laughs> trying to figure out. I was having so much fun watching that because they were all trying to figure out like uh, young people slang because we're all yeah. old. And I was having, I I've made a promise to myself to teach Left some uh, some uh, Gen Z language. Yeah, we so. were hanging out before going live here, getting uh, getting a few little pointers. The zoom slang, yeah. Not not to tease anything, but I'm I'm gonna teach you a <laughs> slang that is so it, it's gonna be so useful in your uh, professional life that I don't okay. know you you <laughs> you might just have to start using it right away. Uh, but we'll get to that later. You know the the zoomer slang is very powerful. It has a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kadea says hey with Riz. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah, Riz is like someone well, hey, who Kadea. is, uh, what is it, charming, Riz. I guess. Someone who is, ah. yes, yeah, so, someone who has charisma. It's charisma. That's what. Riz oh, is. all right. That's where the the, the word comes from, actually. That's the the oh, origin. Oh, charisma. charisma. Okay. So people just oh, say oh, Riz. Boy. Uh, my my favorite stat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Good warlock that mm -hmm. or is it warlock or i don't sorcerer. know sorcerer and paladin <laughs> no i haven't i yeah anyway <laughs> yeah uh okay but so as where I was were asking, we uh, um, the kickstarter yeah so we were talking about the kickstarter before your internet dropped out welcome back by the way uh <laughs> yeah i i went and connected it was having it wasn't let me reconnect so i mm -hmm. went and connected to like another server's voice and then exited that and then came back i don't, I don't know it fixed it <laughs> that's good we're so back exactly see chat's we're using so it back. we're so back we are so so back um but yeah we were talking about the curse one uh, curse one kickstarter about a uh, two years ago right yeah and i was just saying that well the curse one kickstarter uh to say that it was a big success it has to be the biggest understatement because it was <laughs> a massive success. And yeah, the main question I, I have, I guess, regarding that is how much, how, how were you expecting anything close to that? And how did that change your approach to, well, everything in general? Because that, that's a pretty big uh, opportunity, but also like a, a responsibility, right? When you're 
crowd a Kickstarter. Game. Yeah, um, I think we were hopeful and kind of we knew it could be big if we did it right. Um, kind of just a lot of thing, a lot of stars were aligning, you know, around mm -hmm. that period for the game. Like we had sort of the 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 blow up of the kicks coming to Kickstarter video. I joined the team. It kind of brought it, a lot of eyes and attention to it. And it, just, it made a lot of sense to launch the Kickstarter at that point. But we, none of us had done a Kickstarter before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was just a matter of uh, where we're going to approach it, the, I think the bigger question marks were, are we going to do this whole Kickstarter thing? Right. <laughs> you know, Like what's the formula or what's mm -hmm. the, how do you approach this? Because that was a part of um, Hollow Knight's development that you weren't there for, right? Because you joined. I wasn't it there for a that. lot later. Uh... No, but I've backed projects before, uh -huh. so I kind of had a, um, you know, a sense of how they're usually run, and um, I, yeah, pretty much through backing, it's kind of like you you understand stretch goals and all those things. Like we we understood how they they are typically operated, but. We tried to kind of buck trends with uh, our approach in terms of working with um, marketing agencies or paying for mm -hmm. ads or whatever. We just went ground game fully, kind of like how I just would launch a game anyhow through Twitter and YouTube and whatnot. And we ended up getting a ton of uh, new... This was like, I think for, for Crow Sworn, we had like half and half people who had already backed something on Kickstarter before and people who never backed anything on Kickstarter before. That's that's impressive. Which, which I think was is way out, out of the norm. For, mm -hmm. uh, for And games aren't really done on, as much on Kickstarter now uh, anymore. Anyhow, it's mostly board games, it seems like, in the gaming sense. Board games can get, get big and video games can do pretty well, but depending on the scope of your game, you know, it might not be enough like something games, i've uh, seen a lot is board games based on games right yeah um, there's that too and like that, that's a, that goes back to our whole like they go with the easy you know the sure thing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a makes sense low risk um idea oh yeah I, I got the uh i backed the witcher board game finally got it you know and it's just this giant box full of mm -hmm. stuff um, like, even a lot of needed. indies like i think terraria is doing a board game uh I want to say Dead mm -hmm. Cell Stardew is doing a board game. They Binding of Isaac, is, a bunch of people, uh, right? Well, Stardew didn't do a Kickstarter. I was a I I was a part of the board game too for mm -hmm. Stardew Valley. Um, and I, I brought the designer to Eric, and they kind of worked together on developing the game. And I did a lot of early testing with it, um, and they kind of just made that happen outside of a like a crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the game's done really well too. So yeah, it make the, these board games based off of video games are, yeah, they're a hit. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, but it does seem like Kickstarter is more board game friendly right now mm -hmm. than video games. Maybe that's just because people kind of, maybe people were burned on video games in the past. You know, like they backed a game and it didn't come out or something. I mean, even in uh, terms but, of, I feel like the last few years though uh in getting better yeah like in terms of uh metroidvanias we've we've been eating good mm. with kickstarter you know there there have been a lot of oh yeah uh games that i guess i guess some of that could be attributed to uh hollow knight as well right the big success the hollow knight was that a lot of people uh they hear that story or other games that have been backed on kickstarter and now they're a little bit more attentive in the early stages right that oh this game looks cool. This could be something that is interesting. Uh, like there was uh, Haiku the Robot. There are so many. I can't even yeah. name all of them. But uh, there's yep. a lot of really Zappling, good. Zapling, Haiku, um, mm -hmm. Lone Fungus. Uh, these, yeah, a lot of Kickstarter that turned into. And Crossworn. <laughs> yeah. And Crossworn that too. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, there's been a couple others mm -hmm. since even since Crossworn. Yeah, there was um, kind of like uh, Rune Fencer Ilya, right? A few. Months ago, that was they had new. Their Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh, yep. there's a bunch of games. I've, you know, it'd be nice to see more games on Kickstarter 
again, but mm -hmm. I don't know. For whatever reason, I kind of wish that Greenlight would... I mean, I don't want to go off on a tangent too much, but like, I kind of wish Greenlight would come back in almost a Kickstarter sense for Steam, mm -hmm. where you can like set up a page and crowdfund a project on Steam. <laughs> And then, and then eventually launch it on Steam. Like something that nice exists console. alongside the just regular upload process, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that it's like, still like it, accessible it, to people to just put a game out? Right. Yep. I feel like that'd be great for teams that would get you to focus on mm -hmm. marketing and pushing your game, getting some funding instead of doing early access. But maybe they're just... Maybe early access is the solution to that. But mm -hmm. I, I don't... You know, I don't really agree, but that's a whole other, yeah, a whole other big topic. So we basically, uh, the Kickstarter was a smash. It overperformed clearly. You had to <laughs> so make a started... long staircase for those stretch goals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a huge staircase for the little little guy to walk down. Or um, and we start we started struggling to come up with things that made sense. You know, to add as mm -hmm. stretch goals. I mean, kind of like. All the things we were hoping for got hit pretty quickly, and then we were like, <laughs> "Oh, uh, you know, voice acting would be nice. You know, let's do mm -hmm. one for that." And and then um, we'll do the first DLC. We'll promise a post-launch DLC, and then the the I think the final one was uh, the animated sequences, mm -hmm. cutscenes, and that was kind of a wish list. Like, oh, wouldn't that be great? But yeah, probably not gonna get it. But then we hit it. You know, last <laughs> the second to last day, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last day we hit one million U.S. dollars, yeah, which was a, a thousand percent the amount that you were <laughs> yeah. aiming for originally. Isn't like that's crazy? And I'm wondering, yeah, like, that's pretty wild. In terms of like, do you feel the weight? I know you've mentioned this a little bit in the um, the backer updates, uh, mm -hmm. but like, is that a weight that you feel like you need to live up to something now, like to a well, bigger degree than? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, the But it's also something that it's a position you want to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a it's one of those. Um, it's a nice problem to have. They, yeah, like, I think that's the thing or something. It's a like very that. nice opportunity. Uh, right. But it comes with responsibility, right? To... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the team's taking this very seriously and is going to, you know, just the game. I think the Kickstarter said it's supposed to come December 2023. That's mm -hmm. not going to be the case. <laughs> we tried yeah. to make that clear many times. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're a couple of years away, at least, uh, be before this. With the the size and success of the Kickstarter, we want to really do something special. Yeah. So that's the focus, and it's coming along. It's just going to take longer, just because we've kind of scoped some things up so i mean that's i think that's only natural yeah uh with the metroidvania i guess it's kind of easy to attack on new areas <laughs> <laughs> just keep yeah. adding things you know yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, we try not to bloat it too much mm -hmm. you know that's a, something you don't want to do but just make it higher quality yeah not not necess and maybe a little bit more quantity and uh, i guess in terms of recent news regarding the kickstarter and and backer updates and stuff like that there there was the big news of the demo, right? On the the two year mm -hmm. anniversary, uh, you guys held a stream and a bunch of other things, and you also re uh, released the backer demo. And uh, yeah, some of you in chat, you might have you might have seen, you might have seen it around. You might have seen some gameplay. I don't know. Maybe some of you were even here when I streamed it. But um, like, how was the process of crafting a demo? Like, there's like obviously a a bit of a balance that you need to make between showing the progress of the game but also not showing too much um and i, th I thought you had an interesting solution to that and uh i wanted to hear what you had to say about that i suppose well so i'm you know i'm a part of the team and that that you know when it comes to marketing and all of that mm -hmm. you know that's kind of my forte but development of the demo was something that's kind of on um, the two Alex's for the most part and Derek and kind of getting uh, then getting music for the trailer and so like a lot of those a lot of the elements of the demo are something that you're just gonna 
prioritize anyhow with development, mm-hmm. like the feel of moving the char- you know, moving the character around and uh, being able to pick find your scythe. So you got to be able to punch first, you know, this like stuff that was already going to be in the game anyway. You just kind of like move it forward in the mm-hmm. priority list so that you'll have it ready for when you want to make a demo. But the demo, we were worried about. Um, it's it was the, like the question was, how do you give people a a, a real taste without s- spoiling uh, the final game? Mm-hmm. And the solution was to take areas that had been removed, kind of tighten them up, maybe. And this isn't something I had to do. Obviously, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not developing the game in this way, uh, or my role doesn't allow me to, you know, partake in this sense. But it's like, yeah, it, it provided us with kind of a unique opportunity to give to fulfill our our backers, uh, the beta build backers, you know, fulfill our obligation to them, and also. You know, of course, from my perspective, we have a oppor- we had opportunity for another stronger marketing beat than just like just another trailer, quote unquote, mm-hmm. um, at the anniversary. And it's something that we can use, you know, um, when we're potentially talking with uh, other store partners or whatnot. You know, it's like here's a here's a demo for you to play, get a mm-hmm. sense for the game. And but yeah, it's uh, it's an opportunity to sort of target some things in development but then also um you do have to i the sense i got was that of course since it was uh areas that aren't going to be in the final game i guess from a developer perspective you might feel like hey we're spending some time doing something that's not going to be in the final game but really a lot of it will be it's primarily just the areas you Mm -hmm. know um i guess dialogue maybe yeah. Be subject to change but that's a quick change you know it's just text and what's your so, approach on like how do you how do you gather feedback from the data is it like just watching people play it or do you like is there... yeah that's the that's the best way um there's comments coming in from the kickstarter backers watching people play is huge uh and and then just play i mean i i played the heck out of the demo myself i still have 100 percent i'm at 91 percent mm-hmm. uh and i'm i gotta play more and <laughs> knock that 100 percent out it's driving me nuts uh but it's yeah watching people play is probably the best way because you can kind of see when you when you're developing a game and you develop an era you kind of have expectations for what people will what you want them to do like you set it up like okay they're gonna I want them to see this secret up here because they're going to walk this way or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if they'd miss it, then you're like, oh, I got to do something more to make them realize that secret's there. Like it should have been more obvious or something. You know, just little things like are the players seeing and doing what you are intending for them to be seeing and doing? Yeah. You and know? sometimes it's nice to have people miss things as well. Like a lot of the most memorable True, yeah. experiences in, in games are like finding something that it feels like you didn't mean to be to discover or like it wasn't it was meant to be like hidden and you you found it makes the it all feel like a bit more alive uh and i feel like you made a pretty good balance for that like um and that's something that hollow knight excels with as well right that feeling of of wonder and discovery and i really felt that in the crossworn demo even though it was just a taste of the game i think um, yeah (laughs) It gives that's like, good as someone who backed it at, and as someone who's excited for it uh that i feel like it was it was the best way to to show like yes this is what we've made uh like you you can have faith not that i didn't have faith in it like before but it's like yes mm-hmm. now now i know i've played it you know exactly I know what's it's good expect. yeah i know yeah and now i just want more of it and I'm going to a... patiently wait until that day comes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get to showcase the what you how you expect the game to play, but also what is there to do? Like mm-hmm. will there be will there be secrets? Will there be a sense of exploration? Will there be hard bosses? Will there, you know, upgrades, progression, how do all those things pan out and you get you got a taste 
for how all that's going to work. And I think the response has been overwhelmingly positive to uh, to this build. Um, we haven't had a ton of people play it, but I think thousands mm -hmm. uh, have booted it up and played. So that's a, that's a great opportunity to get feedback early on, you know. Uh, normally, you would, as an indie developer or a developer, you would like try to get your game into a show. You know, if you want that kind of feedback, some kind of some kind of event where you can have a booth. You guys did that as well, right? With the like, um, the mm. boss demo or something similar to that. For oh, uh, I didn't mean an event like oh, I don't mean like uh oh, you mean like, like a convention event. or something, like, like a convention. Yeah, exactly. makes sense. Yeah, where where people can walk up and you can watch them play. Uh huh. And what, just because watching people play is it does tell you a lot. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, what like in the process of them playing, you can see things real time when people send you feedback after they're done playing. You know, they won't. You're just not going to remember everything. You know, all your input or whatever. So I think watching someone is there's an advantage to that. Although I would recommend people if there's any indie developers out there. Who are kind of like I'm gonna pay thousands of dollars to <laughs> get get my game at a convention so I can watch people play it. That's one aspect, one one benefit from uh, going to a convention like that. But really, you should be you should be going to an event like that in order to well, getting feedback, finding new fans is another small part. But I think the biggest benefit to doing that kind of thing is to making new potentially new partnerships or relationships with uh you know whether it be valve microsoft nintendo mm -hmm. what have you like make an effort to get your game seen by a big partner um in that sense or maybe merch there's merch everywhere go talk to merch people see if you can you know partner up that that's probably to me like uh the first priority if i'm if i'm going to a convention is to go chat with folks in the in the know so to speak and another like one of the really r random and exciting things that you guys did for the uh, the kickstarter <laughs> that i thought was really silly and i i gathered some questions from some of my content creator friends today for the interview not all of them uh had time to think of a, a question that they wanted to submit but i asked a few people uh and i had a question from scurry and they wanted me to ask you, uh, how did Crowcart come about? Like, how, where did that come? <laughs> where did that come from? You know? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, Crowcart was. Gosh, it was almost like a a game jam situation with the team. Like we were talking about game jams earlier, how you can learn a lot and mm -hmm. experiment and all that stuff. So. I mean, I don't know how it came about. I think that they posted that right after I... They posted the first kind of joke <laughs> crow cart image right after I joined the team. and But then they just took a week and we're, and we're going, yeah, let's just make a crow cart. See if we can do it. <laughs> and make like a silly video from that. And it, and it was looking pretty rough until like the final... I woke up on the day they were going to tweet and it was like, they're like, hey, look at it now. And it's like, wow, this looks great. Like... <laughs> How did you guys do that? And it was playable and we could race each other and it just kind of became like a team meme or something. Mm -hmm. Something fun. Um, where, you know, Crow Cart's not being worked on anymore. <laughs> yeah. At least not right now, certainly. It was uh, like you did but... end up giving it to all the backers, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> that was another one of those. What do we that, give? That, that was a really thing? nice little thing. Also, <laughs> speaking of memes, you mentioned And unworthy memes. too. I'm gonna unworthy teach you then. something, chat. Uh, pay close oh, attention, boy. and I need you all to uh, play along here. Uh, please, in the chat, opening bracket, uh, one of those straight lines that are like a slash, but straight, you know, straight up, vertical, vertical bar, 8-7. Oh. It forms a little crow guy. Yep. Oh, someone did the curly bracket. Oh. Oh, oh. Boy. oh wait, they're getting it, they're getting it. They're oh, we're getting some. Yeah, 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 there you go. There it, it is. It's a bit weird with the font. He he has a different hat today. Uh, <laughs> Depending on open bracket or closed bracket, yeah. you get like a. <laughs> speaking he's wearing of, different kinds uh, of hats. Speaking of 
important things regarding Crow, uh, Crossworn. I have a very important question to ask. Uh, <laughs> and I need you to promise to answer yes or no. I just want a yes or no answer, okay? Oh, boy. Uh, is the Crow protagonist's name John Crossworn? Yes or no? Oh. No. <laughs> I like I like the hesitation. I like the hesitation. Hmm. Well, me, I just tend to I tend to err towards not confirming or denying anything. Just mm. like let people speculate. But <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice he he's he's teasing us. He we don't know what to think. Is he lying? Is yeah. he I guess he can be joking. Is, is he Gross lying? In oh our hearts, gosh. you know? Protagonist. We call him the protagonist uh, among the team. Yeah. Someone said that and we were like, oh, that's good. That is a pretty good one, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stick with John Crossworn, though, because I think it's funny. Okay. <laughs> it, make, it, makes, it makes me think of John Wick. Like a... Like a well, they are you both know. pretty cool, right? So Yeah, like a hero in an action film. John. <laughs> John Crossworn. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Joe Stenja. Oh, there you go. It's all coming together. The left expanded <laughs> universe or something. Uh, so, um, I guess the only other... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So dumb. I think, I think, um, yeah, I think we've covered, uh, like, I, one of the questions I saw people asking was, like, when, when is it coming? And we've, I, we've talked about how since the Kickstarter was really big, it's like, we need to, we need to, we're not going to release this game till it's ready, till it's just, it's chef's kiss, you know? So we're going to take the extra mm -hmm. time keep updating the backers because obviously we're sort of, you know beholden to them in a way like we, we need to make sure they understand they're getting a product uh at the end of the day and make and uh fulfill like i said before our obligations to them uh but yeah we we definitely want to kind of like back away from oh yeah december 2023 and mm -hmm. just say you know when it's done yeah I think I think that's sensible, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, even as backers <laughs> and as people who are excited, you uh, like the the thing that we're excited for is, well, it's the game, but the game is a product of the developer's ability to really follow their vision for what mm -hmm, that is. Exactly. So that's exactly it. I think people are more than happy to wait uh, if it means that. Like, it's not even, even aside from a perspective of is the game good or bad or whatever, because that's subjective, right? But to really let you guys, you know, get your vision out. And this is relevant for everything. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The the Kickstarter, is, that's exactly, that's a great way to put it. The success of the Kickstarter means that the sort of idealistic ver vision for the game can be realized now instead of... Mm -hmm. uh, if it hadn't done, if the Kickstarter hadn't gone off like it did, um, then you have to like start cutting corners to, you know, in a sense, uh, prioritizing certain things over others. And so, you know, okay, we can get Crow Sworn out as an idea in a sense, but maybe not the the perfect uh, uh, perfect idea of what we were hoping to make from the beginning. It was just like, so now we're we're in a spot where we can do that, and you know. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, let's, that's that's awesome. Longer. Like uh, the game's looking really good now, and uh, I don't know. We're all we're <laughs> all excited to see where it where it ends up going. I suppose. Thank you. Uh, whenever it does release, you know. Uh, yeah, you guys can fun. check out uh, like wishlist crossword, uh, everyone. Uh, I yeah, think I don't know. If, I made I chat links commands. Did I make chat commands? I might have forgotten. Oh. We might have been distracted by talking right before. The, uh, I'm gonna interview. try it. Uh, eh, there's no link. There's no link. Uh, wait, hold on. I'll grab it. I'll grab it. This will this will <laughs> ruin the. Wait, th no, I can't do it here. This is gonna leak our DMs, uh, or my DMs with like everyone. 
doesn't have like a weird crop on oh, it. Oh yeah, don't do that. I can tie you can go to crowsworn.com and there's a thing that says wish yeah. list on Steam if you want to go Wait, to Wait, hold on. I can just go on my phone. Oh. Oh, someone's uh, got you. Look at oh, that. Oh, there you go. Crowsworn. Wishlist Crowsworn. It's cool. It's like um imagine here again with the the comparisons. That's uh, okay. Hollow Knight no, meets Bloodborne meets uh cool, Devil May uh, Cry with the yeah, I suppose. I mean, you know better than I do. <laughs> I've not <laughs> played Devil May Cry, uh, but I definitely feel well. I haven't pl I haven't played Devil May Cry either, but I think I understand like the mm -hmm. sort of chaining cool moves together and yeah, that kind of at, like bayonetta sort of combat sense. Already wishlisted. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm. The cool, yeah. cool gothic uh, Hollow Knight thing, which is good and. <laughs> looks awesome and sounds awesome that's one of the my biggest praise so far with uh the cross one demo is the uh the sound design like everything just sounds so oh yeah so beefy you know the impacts really get sold on that so whoever whoever did the audio design uh you can send them a uh blue sr seal of approval seal of approval yeah. for me <laughs> nice a stain of approval would you say hmm. yeah no, I don't mind. I'm just I'm teasing. Um, it's an inside joke with the team, oh, so that right. when they hear that, they're gonna chuckle. Um, <laughs> it, basically, uh, that was a big, um, that was a big part of getting, like, basically Diablo Four came out, and the mm -hmm. team was kind of like, "Wow, oh, this sounds so good." You know how it plays. That's another, you know, that's another topic. But it sounds great, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like. How do we make our game sound like this? So there was like a huge overhaul to the audio sort of system and whatnot to Crowsworn prior to getting the demo together. And so, uh, yeah, that's what you're hearing. It's a ton of work went into overhauling and perfecting mm -hmm. the audio. And there's a lot to it. Like when you have six different sound effects going on, which one is the most important one that you hear? You push that one forward, you push the others back, you know, which Because otherwise it get like, gets like, really cluttered. Like Yeah, you'll get cl it'll just be mush, you know, mm -hmm. and they did a ton of work. It's I it's not something I've really di dove in, uh dived into uh, in coding. Um but I can see why it would be important in a in a game like Postform where there's there's just a lot going on there's mm -hmm. music happening when you get in a fight then like the a part of the track will come up come forward like the drums or something you have that plus the sounds of the enemies sounds of your heel getting recharged you know there's just a lot and you have to kind of create this ai that decides <laughs> which one should be prioritized over the others you know there's just a lot to it and then how quickly and how you know it's almost like mixing music I mean, it's a lot like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it really, it's really important to be like for the gameplay to be supported by the audio as well. That like you can hear the important things, as you mentioned. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. And I got oh another good question regarding Quosworn. We're not quite done here. There's a few more questions oh. that we got from the the viewers. Um, okay. A big oh, one yeah. is uh, console releases, and I, I was wondering if you had. I haven't like looked into this at all so i'm wondering if you have any insight to give on whether it will be on uh, what consoles at launch or anything like that if there's anything that you can say about that at this point in development oh uh, well i think the kickstarter essentially um essentially confirmed that we plan to put close one on all all platforms we just don't know what platforms will be available by the time we Mm -hmm. launch Makes so it was kind of like yeah. it was like you know we want to release it on pc steam mac linux support and then nintendo and sony microsoft will have to look at what's going on in that you know sometimes new consoles come out um and we're not we haven't confirmed yet if we're launching everything all of at the, the same day yet mm -hmm. uh might be like pc slightly before all the consoles or something yeah once again we do have to remember that 
you guys are a pretty small team. Like we're talking yeah, indie yeah, team here. Small team. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, like whether you you would do the ports yourself, like in studio, or you uh, have another like studio team up with you to do it, it still takes like a lot of time, and it's a big endeavor, especially if it's like a lot of platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. So right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All that takes time. So I guess the 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 conclusion is that you're optimistic about uh, console releases, either immediately or along the line after. Development. Yeah, I'd say so because we're the the game uses Unity and Unity kind of has it has support for all those systems. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a you still there's still work to do, but it's not like you're having you don't to have to rewrite the game. Or, right, you don't have to like use a different engine and port it or something mm -hmm. in order for it to work it'll unity will will produce an executable that can run on those consoles so that saves you a huge headache yeah right there. <laughs> like you, you know the potential is there like right off right off the bat that sounds convenient it's a big uh oh yeah because i don't know when i when i imagine porting something i always imagine like i mean there's there's obviously like the the issue of performance because consoles mm -hmm. uh, yeah like if you want to make something run on the switch you're gonna have a hard time <laughs> but yeah i think the switch has some has uh less ram uh-huh is the bigger you have to bigger do a lot concern. of problem solving yeah for that but you know we're, we're confident we'll be able to i mean optimizing a game to run on switch means you're optimizing it for everywhere else too. <laughs> yeah yeah, I guess the uh, when uh, I guess my my frame of reference here is Hollow Knight once again. When Hollow Knight released on the Switch along with the Lifeblood update, the game started running like, yeah. a lot better. The Lifeblood update was like the life super blood was super big for uh, performance for yep. Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it essentially was with mm. the. With, well, they added Hive Knight was... and uh, a few. Right, things. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was mainly like uh cleaning up uh some things. That's when Jack Vine joined the team, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we got it optimized for the optimizations for that we were doing for Switch, we sort of passed on to the PC release through Lifeblood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sounded kind of weird to say. Like, if you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> the lifeblood <laughs> like, of development. Yeah, yeah, like, talking about no, life. We're blood. talking about the lifeblood updates. Patch 1.3 uh, in Hollow Knight. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that that's Crowsworn, I guess. Uh, wishlist Crowsworn, if you're interested. It's very cool. Yeah, can go vouch. give us a follow. Uh, and and the there's a lot of updates on the Mongoose Rodeo Twitter Oh um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let account. me get a link to that one second. If uh, uh, if you're if you're already wish listed and you just want to see updates as the game progresses, that's the best. That's the best place to see everything. They post a lot of screen. You still like to this day? You post a lot of screenshots. Here, yeah. <laughs> here's the Twitter. Uh, and I, re I retweet Twitter. all those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the left Twitter is pinned in the the pin message on on oh, stream. Okay. Um, so like that's that's probably the best way to keep up with him yep. uh, i think there's that's where you're the most active uh and i guess now a lot of people have been shouting it for many many hours in chat i guess now mm -hmm. let's talk about it a little bit uh talk about what what are you what are you talking about the big hornet shaped elephant in the room <laughs> <laughs> so to say uh so i want to preface this by saying uh first of all we're all really excited for Silk Song, and I know there's a lot of things that you can't share, and I won't be invasive or ask any prying questions because, you know, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, that way, you know, development is complicated, and you guys have an approach, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna force anything. I, I don't, I'm not, ah, I can't speak. I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna pry is what I'm saying. Uh, but okay. there was one topic regarding Silk Song that you seemed interested in sharing a little bit more about and around, mm -hmm. I guess. And that is the the delay, quote-unquote. Uh, I don't really know what yeah. to call it. So how did that come about? What was the process of deciding to do it, announcing it when you did, and I don't know, just... 
I'm speak as much as you want about it. I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those uh, topics that, well, essentially, Blue reached out to me earlier this year about doing an interview, and at the time, I knew, I, I well, I shouldn't say I knew, but I suspected we were going to have to announce a you know a delay like the game that the game wouldn't come out by june 12th which was kind of the expectation that was running around mm -hmm. in the the fan circles so i was kind of like well let's let's wait to do the interview till april or whatever may april may and then um thinking that we might hop on a call after that tweet went out and talk about it but the response was very supportive and positive uh to that tweet <laughs> not to mention widespread <laughs> like i kind of i just did not expect it to go sort of viral like that mm -hmm. but uh essentially the message went out game's not going to be coming by june 12th 10th 12th uh, 12th i think yeah well Man, June twelfth keeps coming up over and over again with Hollow Knight. <laughs> kind of a weird, uh, you know, coincidence. But um, essentially, it went down like we were talking with Microsoft before E three in twenty twenty two, and they just asked, you know, are you guys planning on releasing in the next twelve months, or you know, by this time next year? Or it was before, obviously it was before. E3, and we're just kind of like, yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, then you have this uh, this message go out. It kind of turned into a release window, although you know I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. But it's interesting you know, because started... you never confirmed it, right? And sure, right. My my assumption from that, uh, I'm obviously gonna let you share the Team Cherry perspective, I suppose was that the way you guys do things is that you pro like if I were you I would probably want as much flexibility as I can especially yeah. if I'm yeah yeah if I'm team cherry and you know as they like to keep adding things and you know work on the game and have new ideas and I don't know you know um yeah you want to you that's true you like and I've said that in the past that you want to you you don't really want to announce a date until you know for sure, and so um, you know it's just something we were hoping to meet. But as the time drew closer, it was kind of like okay, we need to let you know we probably need to let folks know in some in some way, and and since we're not we weren't sure how widespread uh, I don't know if widespread is the right word, but how much people were really expecting it, mm -hmm. we were kind of like. Oh, you know, Matt. Since I'm kind of I'm an official source for the team, you know, we don't. Not everything comes out through my Twitter, but um, you know, what I say can be taken as from the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll do a tweet, and the people who are really paying attention, which are like the ones who would watch an E3 show and catch the June 12th thing, they'll see they'll see my tweet and you know get the message. Uh, but again, the, it was very, everyone was very supportive. It was, um, <laughs> what's going on? Why does the chat say pet the mods? Yeah. My mods are, my mods are doing their best here. They're holding back uh, a wave of, uh, silk song clowning. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know what else to say. It just was something yeah. we had to do. And, and, you know, at what point did you decide this? Was it like right before the, uh. The, the, that you announced it, or was it something... I mean, obviously you would kind of have a feeling about it, but, like, at what point did you decide to not... or to, you know, make that announcement, I suppose? Um, I don't know. It kind of was just, like, uh, in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, time to do it. You know, it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't and I like think from, really thing. from the community side of things, we all really appreciated that. A lot of people, I mean, I don't think that many people really at that point believe that the game would come out within that period anyway 
Uh, but it was really nice to hear uh, about it, I guess, that, you know, just like a heads up. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I will, well, I just want to assure everybody that the game is still in development. It's got a, It still has, you know, work to be done, like we said in the tweet. The team is working on it. It's it's going to come out. It exists. I don't Woo! know if there's some people who think it doesn't exist. It does. The game. I started another playthrough earlier this week. Yeah, uh, playing look at the that. game. So, you know, um, and you know, I don't want to touch on that too much. But mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm playing the game. There's a game there. <laughs> so, it's coming. Just gotta wait. Are you enjoying it? Is that is that too much to ask? Oh boy. Well, of course I'm enjoying it. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People are gonna take any sort of like reassuring words that they that they can. So, uh, yeah, it's a great job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great job. I'm blessed. <laughs> it sounds like a a pretty great job. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's some ups and downs with it. You know, there's some. There's obviously stressful times in game development. Mm -hmm. Like we talked, we touched on earlier about like when you're launching a game, it's really stressful or there's when you're, I don't know, talking to huge companies about bringing the game to their console or whatever. There's, you know, there's stress about that mm -hmm. or bug fixing bugs or optimizing, you know, things post launch, whatever, what have you. Uh, and uh, just worry, being worried about the reception. Yeah, of for sure. Your game or what or a tweet that you put out. But um, it's still, I mean, I wouldn't rather, I, I love it I love <laughs> in, in indie games. Mm -hmm. So, and another you know, thing, like you mentioned here. challenges, like for one, there was a major global health crisis during the middle of development. Yeah. Like you, you had to figure yeah, out yeah. how to make things work during that time and stuff. Well, so the indie teams I work with for the most part are kind of remote. Mm hmm working so you know when you're just working from home it doesn't you don't lose your stride too much yeah makes sense um, and i guess with team cherry like there's so happens. few people that you know right yeah you have a you small can, you can team. keep the office realistically right exactly uh, yeah or you can or if you have an office you can just kind of like okay we're, we'll take the computers home we'll work from mm -hmm. home temporarily or what have you so um, it's not like a electronic arts or something it's got yeah, where you have to shut down like everything right yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I don't think that. I think we're in a good spot to handle a, a situation like that. Like indie teams in general should be okay with, uh, you know, working at home. Yeah. I, another thing that I guess I wanted to touch on. I'm not. I'm not going to ask too much about Silk Song because I understand. Like, there's a lot of things that you can't share right um mm -hmm. but i i guess on the point of uh what was i gonna ask <laughs> i forgot no, well, i'm I don't blanking know. <laughs> here i'm blanking here <laughs> i already got more than i expected for the record uh i'm being spoiled oh. we're all being spoiled here yeah yeah i don't want to uh, yeah i don't <laughs> i don't want to spoil anything mm -hmm. yeah no spoiled in the Someone sense of you, you know being lavished oh, with silk song news not in the sense i of... see i see what you mean yeah, yeah. You, you're you got more than you're hoping for exactly a lot more well, that's this good. is great <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> another thing is once again like you guys are a very small team and making a game takes a long time uh mm -hmm. and i'm not i'm not gonna put words in your guys's mouths but i guess i guess it's relevant to put into perspective like team cherry they worked very very like a lot lot during hollow knight's development right because there was like a limited yeah. budget and there there was a lot of self-imposed crunch uh and that's one of the good mm -hmm. things with silk song um is that you know you guys have money from hollow knight now you don't need to like work 15 hour days every day and that's really good mm. like i i hope you guys are genuinely like getting rest and taking breaks and stuff like that same thing at, at mongoose oh. rodeo uh, if you aren't you better because uh I, yeah. I make the rules you i i think uh okay all right blue <laughs> i'll i'll relay the message yeah um 
I think even <laughs> I think even uh, you know how we talked about pro cart earlier. Mm-hmm. I think I think even that was kind of a break. That was like a mental break. Yeah, you know, when you're sense. like work, it's because it's such a different idea from a Metroidvania. It was like let's go just do something else, kind of you know stretching your legs, but <laughs> with your brain. <laughs> uh-huh. So you just gotta you kind of just do something different. It's still still staying sharp, but give your brain a rest and then come back to the game. I think that that's kind of something a team can do mm-hmm. is kind of just uh, step aside and, you know, you still work together. You still have that team. Silk Song Racing Aspect. confirmed? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, okay. No did one someone even say that? Or did... Okay. <laughs> You're just messing with me. Yeah, and... Yeah. Keeping um, you on your toes, you know? If uh if if you're here, I think everybody here probably knows who Silk Song is, but you can wishlist Silk Song also at, on Steam or go to silksong.com. Check out some stuff there. But yeah, I think I have a feeling uh, most folks here know about <laughs> Hollow Knight. So they're if they're following you, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the sure. big ones are for, for people here, if they haven't heard of Crow Sworn, go check it out and uh mm-hmm. And I have another game uh, we're going to announce soon-ish. I sh- I'm afraid of saying the word soon now. But uh, just got to find the right sort of situation to make the announcement of the game. It's another Metroidvania. Ooh. Uh, being made by the developers IDOS and FOPS, who did the game Archvale before. So I joined, I joined them recently. As I Man, said, I the Leth effect. Ready. Any game you touch yes. is gonna be good. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. So <laughs> I'm excited to share it with everybody, but there's I, there's only so much I can say without mm-hmm. spoiling yeah. the reveal. So I can say I'm working with that team. They have a website. They have a, a Twitter. IDOS and FOPS. Um, it's a small Twitter. I think they re- <laughs> made it recently. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely be sharing something there in the coming months or in the next year probably uh, but, sounds yeah. interesting i'm so, uh, i'll keep my eyes peeled we'll, we'll all do that wait so <laughs> what really there's still people what? in the chat saying not enough silk song news you know what you know what i'm in a unique position to resolve this let yes or no are there rocks in hollow knight silk song like on the ground rocks on the ground yes uh, maybe. Leth, yes or no? Is Hornet <laughs> in Hollow Knight Silk Song a reference to the hit 2017 indie game Hollow Knight? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. Definitely. There you go. There's a maybe and a yes. Two brand new Silk Song confirmations. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they wanted this whole time. Yeah, you could have just told them about Hornet. I mean, wow, we've okay. never had that officially confirmed that it's a Hollow Knight reference, so. I see there someone you go. said fog. <laughs> Let's go. Silk song news. I mean, hey, we take what we can get once again. Uh... <laughs> oh man. Well, Where's the elephant shaped best... hornet you mentioned? Again, Blue? the uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The best place to see the news you guys are referring to is Team Cherry Games Twitter mm-hmm. um or YouTube channel. Like this is uh because the Twitter, I think, if there's a blog post comes out, you know, obviously it's going to pop up there too. So if you don't have Twitter, then... Uh, I mean, the Hollow Knight main Discord not has sure an announcement you... channel that True, just yeah, relays the Discord stuff is that you guys a good place. announce. Um, if something comes through, it'll be talked about there. So, uh, but yeah, in the... You know, I, I don't know what else to say. The next news will, will come directly from the team i don't know where else it would come from (laughs) yeah right yeah 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 you're the only ones in the position to share anything uh well yeah that's not something i'm trying to do though you know yeah (laughs) it makes sense we've gone we've gone like long enough without Mm -hmm. uh like a post where it's like you know the next one should be pretty exciting Mm -hmm. you know that's i don't know that's what makes sense to me yeah, I mean anything. As as people who are excited for 
Silk Song. Like, we're all very excited for Silk Song. But, you know, <laughs> like, if, if we see anything, we're gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna be happy about it, you know? <laughs> um, Someone asked what my favorite bug is? Uh, I don't know. I think a Praying Mantis is pretty cool. That's a good pick. They are pretty cool, actually. Yeah, uh, they can, like, turn their head, kind of look at you. And, and they're they supposed to be lucky, I think. Mm -hmm. Um... And yeah, I guess I guess that's I'm not I'm not gonna pry anything more about about Silk Song, uh, because okay. I don't I don't unless there's anything you want to share that you were like oh, he didn't ask about this but I, I had this uh, like, prepared. Uh, no, that's uh, that's you know, that's about it, it for that I can share with Silk Song. Makes sense. Oh, another good question. Uh, <laughs> Lords, yeah. Another good question uh, that CC had, because I, I mentioned I reached out to a lot of creators that I thought uh, this one was a good question. Um, and CC asks, you're in the unique position to be working on three of the most anticipated and beloved games in the genre, in this mm. case being Hollow Knight, Crossworn, and Silksong. Uh, is there anything you've learned while working on Hollow Knight that helped a lot with Silksong or Crossworn? And is there anything that you've learned working on Crossworn that helps with Silk Song or vice versa. Hmm. Well, um, I think uh, there, there, there is a lot. It's it would. <laughs> it, there's too much to even mention. But mm -hmm. when you work on uh, a big hit, you uh, just a lot more sort of just kind of flows in your direction, and it becomes instead of you going out there proactively seeking new opportunities there it becomes more of a i need to pick and choose which opportunities we want to take advantage of like it's just all it's just a different feel i mean i'm still very proactive in how i look for things just because that's kind of how, how i am as a person mm -hmm. um, but you know that would be like if i go to a convention or or whatnot i'm gonna go look for opportunities whether it be um you know, say there's like a board game company at there, and I like the game they made. It's so like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make contact with them in case one of my games in the future decides they want to make a board game version or something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but then again, we probably, I probably have seen, you know, 20 different emails of board game companies saying they'd love <laughs> to make a <laughs> holiday board game or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, do I really need to go? hunting as much as i used to probably not it's more like filtering uh, out stuff right like exactly this. instead of hunting work for it changes it like a, a a funnel or a filter but yeah for um sure. yeah just uh learning about uh, localization and um kind of learned about setting up what they call marketing beats you know instead of just constantly pushing a game out you can kind of chill a little bit and then try and hit a big moment mm -hmm. um and uh i think that focusing on beats of like momentary big events or big instances of pushing a game is better for small teams as well like of course you should um if you're excited about your game you know and you got something cool you just made or whatever you could tweet it and whatnot and get eyes on it but um, trying to like bunch the, together your marketing yeah, if you efforts bunch, into like a right. little burst, right? I suppose. Oh, a burst. Yeah, there you go. Maybe that's a better word. Beat, beats kind of like the, mm -hmm. the old school term, but like a marketing burst is kind of, I feel like a better path to take uh, with, uh, with indie games. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I guess that you also end up learning beats. like you... As you as you've had experience, like the the contacts that you're familiar with and all that sort of yeah. stuff, familiarity with games as an industry, that that stuff always keeps improving and developing. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like that you once you've worked on a bigger game, you 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 know you start having lines to sort of I don't know if you want to call them important contact. You get those contacts like you're talking. It's like networking mm -hmm. they call it. You're networking, and like you can do, you can network, but you can also 
like you have to be careful who you're networking with. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's like it's easy to fall in the trap of like I'm meeting all these people in the industry, but uh, you, there's people who you should be trying to meet more so than others. You know, it's like you could very well be like I know all these game developers, but what is that actually going to do anything for your team in the end? Mm -hmm. Knowing a bunch of developers because like. I mean, generally not. You know, it's just fun to go to a, a game developers conference and have a bunch of people there that you can go to dinner with. But that's about all you get from that. And, you know, I'm saying that in a cold way, but it's, it's, if your goal is to go to an event in order to network and gain contacts, just, yeah, prioritize the ones that, um, that you know will help your, your team and the growth of your team, or even just, if a problem comes up, you have an op. Like, say, um, say I was like, okay, we might need a team to help us port Crow Sworn in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, I might look, I might start asking studios, you know, who are producing similar kinds of games. I might be like, do you guys use Unity? And if they do, then it's like, well, um, you know, give me your information and maybe we'll talk later. Maybe you can help us with some porting. If, like, if they had done a console version of their game before, you know? So just like little things like that that you know uh, can really pay, pay out uh, in the future are probably the more important uh, systems or of networking that you want to that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But anyway, now I'm starting to now I'm starting <laughs> to get into like the weeds here or whatever. Mm -hmm. I do think <laughs> it's nice though that there's like some developer advice in sight that. Because, uh, I mean, you know, we're talking about the games, but this interview is just as much about, you know, you as a person and your experience with these things and your unique perspective. So, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I think it's interesting. I don't mind you sharing. <laughs> so I know. Don't, I don't feel uh, like you need to, like, oh, not, uh, not things, talk that's... about all the dev stuff. I feel like that's probably what the that's probably what an interview with me normally. That's like the normal route that would be mm -hmm. taken. If I hadn't been working on, <laughs> yeah, such well-known games, uh, but yeah, I mean, Crossworn just had a big update. It's something I felt like, you know, there's a couple different things I could touch on with an interview, as well as just kind of a, a little bit of background on my journey into indie games. In case there's folks out there who are listening to this now or later that are kind of like, yeah, I'd like to get into indie gaming. What, you know, what should I do? Um, this is one possible route is to learn to program and start making your own projects and then you know you use that as a springboard to learn to like meet other like-minded folks and start little teams and maybe you're gonna find some people who are talented but you don't really vibe with them there you go there's a is that a zoomer thing or is, is vibe vibe with them I suppose yeah okay <laughs> Vibe and yeah. I use it's it's I universal, it but I, the okay. Zoomers do use it. If you have a good vibe, oh, I just earned a subscription badge. Oh, someone gifted you a sub. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, yeah, you just once you find people you really click with, then see if you can build from there. You know, it's uh, I don't know what else to say about getting into game development, but it should be something you want to do, and you and you can pretty much go and do it. Uh, you have the will to do it, as uh, someone was saying recently. You know, you gotta have the will. It's mm -hmm. a big part of it's. It's a it's a marathon to a game launch, from start to end. You know, so it, it's a uh, willpower is just as important as talent in that regard. Makes sense. Makes sense. Why is everyone posture checking? How did they yeah, know? I'm trying. I'm trying to. The, the people are spamming the thing. <laughs> I, I disabled <laughs> the reward. Sorry, mod. Yeah, listen to the mods chat. <laughs> like we were, we love to have you here, but it would be nice if you listen to my mods because they're trying to keep the chat readable and nice so that we can get questions through that might be interesting for Leth to answer. Uh, so yeah, shout outs to my mods by the way. They're amazing. Yeah, they're they're making mods a are... really really valiant effort to combat all the uh the uh i guess the uh, entitlement that Spam. comes regarding oh. some of the the games that leth works on 
Um, <laughs> Pet the mods. That's yeah. That's funny. I haven't heard that before. Which brings us to uh, the uh, Zoomer lingo lesson I was going to teach you, Lev. Oh, and this no. is very okay. relevant to Hollow Knight Silk Songs. So I, I, I need, I'm going to teach okay. you how to do your job here. Uh, because <laughs> right. I am definitely qualified to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, they feel a need to tell you how you should do things. And uh, uh -huh. they, they feel like, they, you know, maybe they're, want, maybe they're curious. Maybe they're feeling frustrated with, uh, you know, the silence or whatever. Uh, which, uh -huh. you know, that's, that's fine, I guess. Uh, but here's the yeah, thing. That's understandable. Yeah, that's understandable. But here's the thing, Leth. Uh -huh. Here's what you tell them. You say, okay. let us cook. That's what you tell oh, them. Well, so this okay. is, it's, to cook is basically, you know, to do your thing. This is something the Zoomers say. So if anyone's like, Leth, where the hell are the Silk Song news? Why, why aren't you telling us anything about the game? When's it releasing? You say, hold up, stop a second, let us cook. We're cooking. Team Cherry is cooking. They're making a delicious five course, 15 mm. Michelin star meal for us. But you know, some <laughs> meals just have to, you know, sometimes you make one of those really, really good meals where you the, the thing has to like pressure cook for overnight or something. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's Silk Song. Silk Song is that good food, you know? And you guys are the chefs. But the important thing is you gotta let the chefs cook. So whenever on, and whenever someone asks you, you say, "Let us cook." All right. Okay. Keep that one in mind. That's like a like a stew is like better. Yeah. Than stay. You gotta wait. Okay. Let exactly. Us cook. Yeah, I've seen. I saw that a lot in response to the the delay tweet. Like, <laughs> let them cook. Exactly. And I was like, there oh, I, I think I get it. See, you're so all down right. with the kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I saw it from like a 30 year old guy, you know, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe they're down with the kids as well. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone, you know, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Let them cook. Yep. Yeah, I exactly. Saw it a lot, really, truly. It's okay. It's always relevant. Uh, I, all right. What else is that? Anything else I need to know? I'm going to read through comments? the. Uh, oh, okay. If there are any. Uh, questions you should take we a have a lot of it. questions that came through but that was i felt like we were taking those because we were worried I'm, we might run through the interview too quickly but uh -huh. now it's and we enough. didn't we're like three hours no, in didn't. this was gonna be an hour yeah, and whoa yeah so <laughs> i don't know uh uh maybe let's just quickly uh take a peek oh, shit, i think I we covered a PDF. lot of this stuff too oh no Hold on. All the P no, but uh, you're, I was talking Reopen about the, uh, the questions on. in the questions in uh, our, our interview chat. That, that oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mods are posting. I mean, I feel like uh, we covered um, a lot of yeah. the things just coincidentally that people are asking about. And a lot of the things, uh, while they are good questions, are things that I'm pretty sure that you can't really tell us much about without like breaking NDA or something which I'm yeah. not gonna force you to do because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just nice like that you know I don't thank you <laughs> well yeah a lot of these when I'm scrolling back here it's I think they were asked before we kind of just ended up answering them mm -hmm. sort of organically For through sure. conversation I do have the Hollow Knight bench in the yeah. backyard oh that's a I question left well, oh okay is the hollow knight bench comfortable because oh. that's something i've been wondering about a lot like Elderbug says it's oh. comfortable and <laughs> it doesn't look that comfortable is he lying uh what <laughs> i mean is is elder bug i mean maybe maybe he's not lying maybe he thinks it's comfortable it, he, d he doesn't even seem so... to ever sit on it so i don't know if he really knows what he's talking about it is is it comfortable <laughs> i've i've it's comfortable in if you sit a specific way. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be very. I mean, you have to have posture essentially. Like if you sit with proper posture, it feels fine. If you try to like uh, lounge in it, it's <laughs> metal and it doesn't. Uh huh. It doesn't want to let you lounge. So, I mean, I don't know if that does that answer the question. <laughs> I guess it does. Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, you can't <laughs> lounge in it. You have to kind of sit properly in it for it to feel mm -hmm. good. It's good for the plushies. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I do have this in the backyard. Let's see. Uh, balancing. Oh, any challenges balancing being a part of multiple gaming teams? I think that's an interesting question. Go um, for it. I, I haven't had any challenges there, but I also try not to pick up too many games so that that won't be a, come a problem. Mm -hmm. Like The um, nice thing about your specific position, like the, the job that you tend to take on with game studios mm -hmm. is that uh, you, you probably have some say in like release because like a lot of a lot of the work sure. that you yeah. need to do is very much around like the release pre and after release of games yeah uh yeah. so i guess you have the benefit of trying to like attempt to not schedule all of the games i guess that's kind of brings it back to what you were saying uh about breath of the wild <laughs> yeah exactly that you try to yeah so yeah uh i definitely yeah that that's all that's a factor too and mm -hmm. but but so far, I don't think, I don't think there's a, a worry about the games I'm on launching simultaneously. So, um, someone asked what my favorite game games are. Some of your favorite? Oh, well, my favorite, my all-time favorite game is Halo Combat Evolved. And God, I'm a child. <laughs> When was that yeah, game released? That, that was 2001, I think. Okay, I was not even close to being born. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't play Halo anymore, but I played that game, uh, the Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, for so long, and invited friends over to play LAN parties and what, or, you know, Xbox LAN parties, I guess. Like have like twelve people over and we're all and it was just madness. Order pizza and whatever. <laughs> um, I have very fond memories of of that experience and I just felt like that game uh, was just so well done and very like it it uh did a lot of things. It was innovative in a lot of ways that it doesn't really get credit credit for. Like for instance, Halo 2's matchmaking system was kind of the first matchmaking done ever. And now that's just a standard thing in multiplayer games. You just get matched up with people who are your skill level. And it's mm -hmm. like rare a game doesn't do that. And that was Halo 2 that did that first. Um, so, yeah, Halo 1, uh, I mean, there's a lot to it. But I used to have a huge list of all the stuff that Halo did first. <laughs> like, I was just so blown away by the game. Uh, but, yeah, I don't play Halo much anymore. It's not the, I mean... It's not Bungie making the game anymore, so it's kind of like Halo skinned FPS. Makes I mean, it's, I'm sure it's still great, but I just don't, you know, I don't get as excited yeah. about about it. What are you playing right one, now? Two, what are am I playing right that you're like enjoying right now? <laughs> Besides Silk Songs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously that's the big one that you mentioned. That you <laughs> and Crow Sworn last week. And... <laughs> Uh, Aside from the ones you're working on, I suppose. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> let me see. I, I mean, just I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm teasing everybody. Sorry, right that now. was a very Sorry, stupid guys. question. I should have expected that <laughs> as an answer. I already told you. Yeah. Uh, let me just check my Steam real quick to see what what I've uh, been just. Let's see. Um, I played Outlast Trials with the Mongoose Rodeo team. You guys heard of Outlast Trials? Do you know what that Never is? Never heard of it. It's like a Outlast is like a scary, uh, intense mental institution escape kind of game, mm -hmm. and it's got a co-op. The Outlast Trials is like a cooperative online idea around that. And it's it's pretty tense. It's good. Oh, we gosh. we all really enjoyed it. That's your idea, got... like team relaxation activities, playing yeah, board games. Like... Yeah, you gotta Holy help. You shit. gotta you gotta help each other out. It's tense, you know. You gotta rely on each other. That's <laughs> good team, team building. building. <laughs> yeah, phasmophobia. We were playing for a minute uh, back when we first joined. Uh, once the team formed early on, but I was kind of at the tail end of enjoying Phasmo at the time, so we didn't play that too long. But then Seven Days to Die was a a big. We played that for months. Oh my god, uh, all the team. horror games. I can't handle Seven horror. Days to Die. Oh yeah. Yeah, Kadea said I would quit. I can't with horror. <laughs> yeah, if I if I were in any of those teams and you're like, oh, we're gonna play horror games, I'm like, nope. 
signing oh, your, my resignation. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go to bed, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm a coward. I can't do horror games. I tried playing Phasmophobia, and that game was too scary for me. I feel like my limit Asmo goes at, like, little nightmares. That's, like, a nice level mm. of horror for me. That That's game is really good. I'm uh, mostly a co-op gamer, so... Uh-huh. Uh... Yeah, it's, uh, like... Because when, you, when you're just, like, working on games all day, it's kind of like, I don't want to go work on... Go play a single-player game. I'd rather... If I'm going to play a game, I want to play with some friends. Mm -hmm. Kind of just zone out and have some fun. Nothing too serious. Like, well, I'm not yeah, gonna if go I'm, play if I'm relaxing, I'm not yeah. playing Hollow Knight. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's, yeah. like, I guess kind of my job thing, kind of-ish hobby. I don't know what to call yeah. it anymore. Yeah, I I am so lazy, Leth. You have no idea how little speedrun practice I do in my free time. It is... <laughs> you're just like, that good, naturally. No, like, it, 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 if I were to practice, I would improve so much faster. <laughs> Uh, but I'm too lazy, so I'm not doing that, uh, because, uh, I don't know, I'm just not. <laughs> yeah, so, um, someone asked if you have, uh, tips for aspiring indie devs on how to grow or promote their games. Ooh, that's I a mean, good we question. I mean, we, we kind of touched on that. Like, for one, you have to just make an effort to, I think a lot of indie teams don't realize that you could work on a game for years and if you just go well I'll just launch it on steam and it'll take care of itself i mean there's there's some truth to that in a sense but uh like uh i think what you want to do is is uh well man i mean you have to find a an outlet into sort of the streamer space like if you can find streamers who love playing indie games just experimental games what have you um that just they play everything under the sun like lyric is a mm -hmm. a large streamer who plays just everything um i mean i found out about a couple games from watching lyric play and but what that the tricky part about the that is how do you contact lyric and say hey check out my game i I feel like if you just genuinely go and start trying to be a part of Lyric's um, Twitch channel and community, and you could just casually mention, "Yeah, I'm working on the game. Can't wait to share it with you, whatnot." It's kind of like this game you played. What you know, if you liked it, you kind of just uh, have to really put in some time to uh, you know get to know folks over there on Twitch, mm -hmm. and and then. I don't know. Uh, that's that's how I did it. Was was a, a genuine like. Let me just play some games with with people. Uh, and sometimes your first game is a stepping stone to your next hit, too. Like you don't always. It's not always your first game that is the one that is going to be the banger. It needs to. You know. Sometimes you got to go through a game and learn everything. It has to do with developing and launching a game so you're better prepared for the next one that is that you'll you know that one will be the big one. Oh boy okay wait hold on people are all asking what? about the blog post comment no that was not a confirmation about a blog post what? uh something you mentioned while we talked about silk song no no you're reading oh, into it I too think much. I oh yeah 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 you're reading he, he yeah. didn't I tease a I, blog I, post he was just talking no I about... didn't yeah, see, not, it's already I begun. Saying... I, I, you know, that's something that I find. <laughs> it really <laughs> made me understand you guys on on such a deeper level. Announcing this interview has made has put all of Team Cherry's silence into such perspective for me, because, you know, I announced the interview and immediately there's like, you you sent me like the link to Reddit, left for the Silk Song Reddit. <laughs> People are yeah. making, like, speculations, and they're making, like, conspiracy theories about the interview that, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if yeah. if I if I were you guys, and any time I go out and say anything about anything, even if it doesn't have to do with, uh, like, Silk Song or anything work-related at all, and then, like, any time you do that, ten people go and, like, make articles and theories and all that stuff, of course I wouldn't go out in public. 
you know, and yeah. say things. Like, <laughs> I think if I tweeted, like, the sun's coming out tomorrow, it would uh -huh. it would turn into, like, a... Well, Silk Song release date tomorrow confirmed? Oh my yeah, God. it would turn yeah. into <laughs> something. I don't know. Maybe that's mm. too simple. But I... The, the fans... I'll just say this. Um, we appreciate all the fans. It's, like, the... When pe I understand the, that some people are frustrated with um, lack of communication, but um, our like a teams, you know, you need to focus on making a game. That's that's our job, making a game that you guys will love or enjoy. And um, you know, I like I said, I get it. Uh, but even uh, it's at the point where, uh, and this is a, again a good problem to have where people are just. Uh, too excited into... <laughs> yeah well yeah I, I guess in a sense yeah like you want people to be this uh excited about something you're working on um i've never i've never seen i've been in this situation before uh you know i guess maybe that maybe that makes sense though because it's like when you're launching a first game from a team you, you typically won't have excitement like, to this degree I mean, there are exceptions to that, of course, uh, but um, like it makes sense that like a sequel to a, a hit game would have this much going on. But uh, all I can say is, you know, just be patient with us. We're working hard, and you know, we're trying to get this game to you. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really all you need to say. I feel like I, I think we're all, we're all like we're all excited, right? And I think uh, mm -hmm. most of us, I'll, like. Once again, I think it's a small minority, like a very loud minority of people that tend to like do all the uh, <laughs> harassment and stuff like that, uh, which is not cool. But like, I, we're all excited for Silk Song, right? It's gonna, it's gonna be cool. Uh, but yeah, I, I want there yeah, to I be just... a community environment that is like supportive of you guys, where you feel like you can take your time without disappointing people. Uh, because it's it's just nicer that way, you know. <laughs> Let them yeah. cook, exactly. Let them cook. They're right back to it. Let them cook. Let <laughs> them cook. Hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let them cook. Exactly. Uh, Let them cook. I guess that's kind of everything that I had planned. Uh, I suppose, but I, I do have. Oh wait, I just saw someone's message. There, Jonathan. Oh man, I'm not gonna say your last name, John. Uh, it looks it looks French almost, but uh, Jonathan says weird place to send this, but I wasn't able to get through on Discord. I took over from you recording on Lem in the vocalized mod. And the saddest we were not to get the original Lem in the mod as an absolute highlight of my year to get a chance to work with and for such an amazing community. Yeah, that's. That was also a part of why I didn't want to do it because I heard some of the voice actors who were trying out for the parts and I was kind of just like, wow, these guys are so good. I don't even, you know, you don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. I did the voice of the bug uh, voice in the game, but but these people are way better at this than than I am. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad you're able to do that. You did a great job. Yeah, I was really impressed with the nailsmith. Also, like I didn't even I didn't even try out for that. I heard, I heard the person that was in the front runner. I was like, I'm not even gonna try out for this. <laughs> like they sound better. This, I, you know, they sound yeah. Amazing. Vocalize was fantastic. Uh, I I feel like those big like fan created projects are they're one of the the pinnacles of like community. Like it, it's just a such a showcase of the passion for. That we all have for these things uh, oh yeah yeah i'm glad people can do i don't know about uh that's a question that gets asked a lot about team from teams you know it was asked during the crossworn stream like do you support mods or something like that or are you going to add mod support mm -hmm. and we were kind of like we don't know what that means <laughs> you know <laughs> like we're like you can mod the game if you want it's in unity we don't know what it, we don't know how to mod games you know we're just developing them like, how would you make it easier for people like build some like a level editor or something oh, we're not doing that 
I don't know. It's, it's just the question gets asked a lot. I don't know what people mean by that. But we're not going to do anything to keep you from modding either. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know what you'd have to do for that also. Like some kind <laughs> of, uh, I'm sending you DRM with homework, Lev. Uh, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> now you have to play uh, Vocalized and Pale Court because they're amazing. Oh, oh really? At yeah. the same time? No, not, I mean, nothing's stopping you. I guess they probably function at the same time. Uh, but that that's your oh, homework. <laughs> oh, I, so it sounds like I helped choose who, uh, who Nailsmith was going to be. CC yeah. Says. Saw that yeah, message. I was blown away by um, one of the guys. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the Nailsmith. Yeah, he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but sorry, CC about backing out on i still feel kind of bad about that like i wanted to do it but i was like ah uh, there was just a lot it wasn't just like a simple decision there were a lot of elements to not following through with that you know some stuff i can't talk about but mm -hmm. part of it was hearing these other voice actors do a really nice job and being kind of like well they should get the role you know all right well uh i think uh that's I I have one more thing, actually, before you go. Okay. Uh, I have a small favor to ask of you, Lev. Uh, okay. And funny enough, uh, I guess the best way to put this is uh, I would like to ask for you to act as a uh, message crow, <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Um, so I want you to send a message to all your colleagues at Team Cherry and Mongoose Rodeo. <laughs> A nice uh, voice actor was spot on. Someone's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I have a bit of a favor to ask. Uh, okay. If you could s relay a message over to the rest of the, the people at Team Cherry and Mongoose Rodeo. Uh, just just saying that we're, we're excited. We're very excited to see uh, what you guys are working on. Uh, take your time. We're, we're going to be patiently waiting. Uh, and yeah, I hope you're having a good day. Get some breaks as well. And uh, all right. Yeah, that's that's really all I have to say, I think. And I feel like oh, thank you, Blue. The the community agrees on that. I feel like I'm speaking for all of us here. Yeah, uh, Blue speaks for all of us. Someone said exactly. And uh, thank you for coming, Leth. It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, that yeah, we were. This thing. feels like it was. You and I were chatting for like an hour before. Yeah. <laughs> we started. So this has like been a, been a long time in the chair chatting mm -hmm. with Blue today. Uh, it was nice to hear your perspective on a lot of these things. Um, and uh, yeah, we ended up going for, you know, we were planning for about an hour and a half is what we said before. <laughs> well, and uh, yeah. we are currently three hours and twenty minutes into the stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, new record, <laughs> new record. Yeah, exactly. I think it might be a while before I do another interview. This yeah, is, uh, it makes sense. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all out there now. This interview pretty much covered everything I would want to tell people, you know, with mm -hmm. like uh, getting into games or how I, how I did it. If anyone's interested, I don't think people are really interested, but maybe some folks. Later I think on it's interesting. Like, how about that guy? Don't I don't. don't I, I do sell think it's interesting. Short. No, I, I'm not saying it's not interesting. I just think like people don't. You know, I I think I stay well enough in the shadows of things. You wouldn't think to be like, let's go see what Leth has to say about getting into indie games. <laughs> but maybe someday we'll see. Do a panel or something. Yeah. Uh, but all right, cool. Yeah. But yeah, Thanks, everyone, uh, follow Leth on gonna... Twitter, I guess, is the best place to keep up with you. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. And he posts and reposts things that are related to the projects that he's working on uh, there. That's true. I, I do post everything that comes through from yeah. the project. <laughs> on, so, Every um, new asset, you're just like, oh. Yep. 